Hello and welcome to Brockton Community Access Programming. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking at the uh, 2020 primary here, uh, both statewide and Brockton-wide and, and Plymouth County-wide. My name is Dr. Mike Krasanek from Bridgewater State University and I'm joined by, and I'll have him introduce Tom himself. Minicello. how are you? I'm on the uh, Brockton School Committee here, a longtime Brockton resident, also a uh, board member here at uh, BCA and uh, vice president of the organization. Wonderful. So I, I, th I think to begin with, and, and Tom and I can work toge together on this, is just to uh, inform you of who's on the ballot tonight, if you don't know that as well, but certainly uh, uh, there's enough signs out around, uh, in the city and, and in the county. But uh, let's just go quickly to see uh, who we'll be talking about tonight uh, and, and what kind of races we'll be, uh, we'll be following. Certainly at the, uh, at the national level and the statewide level is the U.S. Uh, is Congress, uh, is the race for the U.S. Senate between uh, the incumbent Ed Markey and the challenger uh, Joe Kennedy III. So we'll be looking at that. Uh, in terms of uh, nationally, but also have an impact here on, on Brockton, is the U.S. representative uh, for the 8th District, uh, the incumbent Stephen Lynch, and the challenger Robbie Goldstein. And then we have the Massachusetts Governor's Council with uh, Chris Ionella uh, from the 4th District. And I'll let Tom uh, talk a little bit about some of the local races then as well. Certainly. Um, well, this is certainly a, uh, an interesting uh, race. We have a uh, well-known uh, Michael D. Brady, a uh, senator, and we have uh, Moises Rodriguez, a uh, certainly well-known uh, former uh, mayor of Brockton and now serving certainly as Councilor at large, two very well-known names um, here in the city and who have uh, served uh, here in Brockton for many years. Uh, the uh, next race, uh, and that is obviously the race for senator, uh, and we have uh, another interesting uh, race, uh, another sort of interfamily squabble here in the, in the city of Brockton between uh, Michelle Dubois, who is the current sitting representative uh, for the 10th Plymouth District, challenged by uh, Jack Lally, who is a city councilor uh, from Michelle Dubois' old ward. So that is going to be a very interesting race. Um, we also have uh, a register of probate uh, on the Democratic side unchallenged, uh, Matthew J. McDonough, and um, county commissioners. Uh, we have a, a, a large field, uh, Gregory M. Hanley, uh, Michael G. Bradley, Carlos A.F. De Silva and Pat and John Patrick Reardon, um, some very familiar names. Um, so this should be uh, quite interesting. And then county treasurer, we have uh, Thomas O'Brien, Thomas J. O'Brien. So uh, uh, an interesting mix of characters. On the uh, on the Republican side, we want to uh, take a look at uh, the race for uh, the Republican primary for the U.S. Senate, uh, Dr. Shiva Ayudarai. Uh, versus uh, Kevin J. O'Connor. So we'll be looking at that as well. Uh, Plymouth County Commissioner Jared Valenzuela uh, is, uh, is the Republican candidate for that, for that position. And I think finally we have uh, uh, our from, from Brockton, Karina Lisa Mompelas uh, from, for Plymouth County Treasurer on the Republican side. One of the things I think we're going to be watching very, very closely, and that is to uh, wait until the polls close, which they, which they have, uh, and, uh, and then uh, keep you updated with uh, some, of the, uh, some of the races, uh, particularly the, the race for uh, State Senate uh, and uh, also the, uh, the 10th, 10th District. So uh, they'll, they'll be coming up and we'll be uh, watching very, very closely and giving some uh, instant analysis of, uh, of who's up and who's down and, and uh, how best to understand uh, how the voters of, uh, of Brockton have, uh, uh, have made their choice, at least in this, uh, in this, in this primary. I know, Tom, you have uh, uh, an interest in some of these uh, races. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, certainly. I mean, the, the Brockton races are, are really uh, very interesting, I think, to everyone here in, in the city because um, all of the candidates are, are very well known. Um, in, in, most, in many cases, uh, in the past, they've supported one another. Mm -hmm. So um, there's definitely you know, a, a sort of an interfamily squabble um, right. and people uh, challenging. Um, uh, the, you know, it seems like um, with respect to um, the race for senator, um, 
Uh, Michael Brady certainly uh, has that held that position for quite some time. Uh, he started out here in Brockton, I believe, on the school committee, yep. and then worked his way through the city councilor, then uh, state rep, and, and now senator. Um, uh, you know, certainly, uh, Michael Brady is known for putting in uh, uh, a lot of time, and also uh, famous for being able to appear in uh, the most uh, appearances in one day. Um, you know, and. and and just you like, whoa, here comes Michael Brady walking through the door. <laughs> yeah, and, and so he's amazing that way. And then uh, Moises Rodriguez, who has been uh, in Brockton politics now for quite some time. Uh, he basically, Moises, uh, is sort of the, the, the American dream, you know, uh, sure. comes, comes to the country, uh, Cape Verdean background, very successful, very well spoken. Uh, U.S. Navy uh, worked his way through. Um, uh, basically, uh, the, the city council uh, then uh, is appointed as the mayor. When unfortunately, our mayor Bill Carpenter, right. uh, you know, left us so so too soon. Um, again, uh, an advocate for the city, uh, uh, for the city's youth. Um, you know, he uh, Moises, I would say, has his uh, pulse on you know the, the changing dynamic of Brockton. You know, sure. um, you know, Brockton is you know now becoming. Uh, a city more uh, of color, um, and um, you know I've always said that Brockton you know, is a city of immigrants. Um, sure. It's just a matter of you know where people are coming from. You know, you know years ago it was you know Italy, Ireland, sure. you know sure. Sweden, uh, sure. you know what have you. Um, now you know people are coming in from certainly in Cape Verde, mm -hmm. uh, Brazil, uh, you know, and and on a whole other you know host of of interesting places, but. Um, you know, it really is a melting pot. Yeah. It's just a matter of where the pot is coming from. <laughs> now, both of these, both of these men are very, very well known. So I mean, very well it, known. It's, it's uh, not something that yeah. there's one person coming out of nowhere. Uh, to, no, uh, and that's and that's what's so interesting. I yeah. mean, because so many people, uh, you know, in the city, uh, you know, uh, know them very well. Yeah. You know, so it's funny. It's going to be funny. And to be honest with you, I think there's going to be a lot of you know people not telling people who they're voting for because for. they're going to hurt people's feelings. You know, because yeah. because I think there's many people that like both people. Yeah. Um, Michael certainly has had uh, some issues lately, yeah. um, you know, and, and it's certainly no secret with regard to, you know, uh, the drinking and driving situation. Sure. Um, and, and Moises, you know, I honestly and openly feels that um, this is not the type of uh, attention a senator sure. should have, sure. and sure. feels that he could do a better job. And. Um, the Brockton voters will decide yeah. tonight who they have more confidence in. It would appear that Michael Brady does have a good deal of support from unions and from public employees. Uh, is that is that fair to say? Uh, that's uh, a very firemen fair and thing. policemen, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Yes, yes. Michael Brady is known through the city as never taking a vote that is not going to benefit a union. That's basically <laughs> you know, that's that's the honest truth. You know, yeah. uh, so there's I, I would uh, any union organization. Um, Michael Brady is certainly a friend to, mm -hmm. um, and always has been, and probably always will be. But you know, but Moises certainly has a good relationship with the, you know yeah. all those people as well, and and like I said, you know the you know, the population in Brockton is changing, yeah. so it's going to be very interesting to see how this. Um, well, there there comes is a about. reasonably large Cape Verdean population, so uh, if, if mm -hmm. they come out to vote for. Yeah, Moses, yeah. It, it, but it, but remember, there are other communities involved well, as well, yeah, not just yeah. Brockton, because yeah. you know um, that. Um, no, you're right. You're yeah, right. I mean you know you have to take the towns. You know, with regard to that district, you have to take Brockton. Certainly, that's that's a huge piece. But uh, parts of East Bridgewater, uh, Halifax, Hanover, Hanson, Plimpton, Whitman, parts of Easton. So you know there is, you know there there is a dynamic in terms of uh, you know the different uh, ethnicities and the different makeup of the populations. Now whether that's going to have a overwhelming effect, I don't know. But yeah. um, you know there. It, that's certainly something that I'm sure the candidates looked at. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, you know, demographics. Um, and then we have our um, <clears throat> our race for state rep. Right. Um, right. You know, we have Michelle Dubois again, uh, born and raised in Brockton, pretty much, um, and she represents parts of Brockton, um, Ward Five, Ward um, parts of Ward Five, parts of Ward Four. All of Ward Six, which is Jack Lally's backyard, Back, backyard, um, yeah. But it was her backyard too. So yeah, that's what's yeah. interesting. You know, that's yeah. why this is such a this is such uh, an interesting night for for these two uh, positions and the, and these four candidates. Then you also have um, East Bridgewater, uh, West Bridgewater, well, parts of East Bridgewater, and and all of West Bridgewater. Now, what's interesting there is that you know um, Michelle Dubois has been regularly challenged by Tim Cruz's brother. Um, yep. And. Um, 
and, and, and he's always done o decent in the towns. Sure. Um, so the question is, is Jack Lally going to be able to take the towns yeah. uh, and, and basically pick up where, uh, you know, candidate Cruz has left off and also take a good chunk of Brockton? Yeah. And, and that's what's going to be a very interesting night we'll have to, <laughs> with those two races. You know? we'll, have to, we'll have to see. I, I know yeah. they're going to be looking at some of the early uh, mail-in voting first, so we might get a little bit of a sense of exactly of how yeah. a little are taste going. of where things are breaking. Breaking, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, that, so bro locally, this is going to be a very exciting night for and Brockton. Then and then, of course, there is the county commissioner. There's four or four individuals on that ballot. Uh, some are 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 well known. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Uh, Hanley, certainly, yeah. Uh, Greg Hanley, Hanley and Mike Bra yeah. Bradley as an example. Well, all, yeah, all of them are. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, Carlos Silva. I've seen he seems to be waging a very very aggressive campaign. I don't know how much that's going to have an impact, but you see a lot of his signs around. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. We'll have to. We'll have to just see. And, and, yeah, and notice that they currently all currently hold positions. Right. So, so they're you know they they are no strangers to um, you know politics and campaigns. Yeah. Um, whereas on the uh, on the Republican side, with regard to Karina Lisa Mompelas, she you know she's a youngster. She she I think she's only seventeen ish, seventeen maybe. Oh really? I didn't. Yeah. I oh would, yeah, young young. I mean she I, yeah. I've seen pictures of her. Yeah, she yeah. seems like a very yeah, yeah. young person. She's very her. motivated. Yeah. Uh, she, I don't think she's held office. She ran for mayor. I mean yeah. so she's very uh, ambitious. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure on her 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 background. You know her work background, but she's you know I think she's still in her teens yeah. or late teens. Yeah. Um, and but um, you know not to say that she can't win because you know uh, our candidate well, Jack Lally, 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 right? Lally, 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 yeah. Now when you talk about he, he youth, he can't be more than what mid twenties probably. He's twenty. Oh like no, that? he's twenty. I believe he's twenty two. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think okay. he's Jack's twenty two. I know he's. He was, I know uh, he's young. So it's. Oh yeah, yeah. At eighteen, uh, he was became the youngest uh, person elected to uh, the Brockton City Council. And if he's elected, uh, if he ends up being elected to um, the state rep seat, I believe he'll be the youngest uh, elected. Uh, State rep ever from this area, yeah. um, so so this is this is very interesting. Um, yeah, so I mean, youth can do it as long as you, I guess, do the work and uh, get the word out and your message out. And the, and today is a beautiful day, so there shouldn't be any problem with turnout in terms of no, the weather. Yeah, Usually, no, sometimes. No, no. Uh, People complain, well, I don't want to go out in the rain or, uh, or wind or whatever. Yeah, no, but no, I've been hearing preliminary reports, and they say that this is going to be a very well. Um, uh, attended uh, vote this uh, yeah. this primary, but because I think people are, have been cooped up and want to get out, but <laughs> but uh, but there's been, this is going to be the number one I believe uh, you know mail in uh, election yeah. ever, yeah. obviously for you a, know, mi a million they said have been voting yeah. uh, by by mail, and then of course you have the Kennedy Markey race, which I think uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know where it's going. Uh, people say that Markey well, is yeah, going to be yeah. ahead, but uh, yeah, now, there's a familiar sandbox of two kids that have played, you know, two families of kids that have played yeah. in the box together, throwing sand in each other's face. Um, that's obviously interesting. Um, uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, Markey has watch. never lost an election, and Kennedy, the family, has never lost an election. So, uh, so someone's going to yeah. come up short tonight, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be fun to watch. Um, yeah. So tonight's going to be interesting. And of course, Steve, Steve Lynch versus Robbie Goldstein, and yeah. it, it would appear that uh, Goldstein has put up uh, more of a challenge, at least from what I've been able to determine, th against yeah. Steve Lynch. I, I think Steve Lynch uh, likely has some advantage as the incumbent, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, Robbie Goldstein does seem to have some money behind him hmm. uh, and some visibility, so we'll have to, we'll have to see how that, uh, yeah, I, how I that plays Steve out. I think Steve Lynch has always been in this area um, viewed as a steady hand, yeah. uh, someone yeah. that's reasonable, yep. someone that doesn't come across as a, a sort of flamboyant, so to speak, right. with, with regard to the issues. That, that he's you know, a, a reasoned, balanced type of person, certainly, you know, you know a Democrat uh, takes the Democratic line and position, but but I think someone that that you can talk to sure. and you know the voters. Uh, and of course, Stephen Lynch has seniority and has a chair chairmanship of committees. And uh, you know, if if the Republican, if the Democrats hold a house, which they likely will, uh, I'm sure. And if he wins, Lynch will continue to be an influential force in the uh, mm -hmm. in the United States House. I know he's taken a, a stand on the post office issue and has been. Uh, very, very active in terms of supporting the mail carriers and the like. So, uh, uh, again, an important voice in the uh, in the House of Representatives and absolutely. in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I, I don't know whether whether they were going to uh, uh, see if any of the early mail-in votes are coming in. We'll just have to uh, 
uh, see whether they uh, whether they're going to be showing up here on the uh, on the board here. But right now, I don't. Th I think that's the the case. Uh, on and, our Republican side. And the Republican side, is, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, this is, these are yeah, interesting I don't want to ignore them because that, that's unfair yeah, well, here. Well, so. but, I mean, these are, these are very interesting candidates. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what a story, this gentleman, and yep. achievements. I mean, uh, born in Bombay, India, you know, has earned you know, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, PhDs from MIT, um, you know, well-respected, you know, has, has written uh, author of over 10 books. Um, he's, he's basically uh, claims that uh, he's had a huge influence with regard to the to email, the development of email. I mean, this, this person, you know, with all his credentials, and, and I think you know, has all sorts of connections to different uh, cutting of the edge sort of uh, uh, businesses, uh, yeah. is, is yeah. quite the entrepreneur. Yeah, he's, he's been very successful, very successful yeah. as an entrepreneur and inventor, well, inventor yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and yeah, certainly yeah. an intelligent individual from MIT. And, and, and again, the uh, you know the American dream. I yeah. mean, really, at the top, you know, at the top. I mean, MIT. How much better can you get than yeah. that? You know. Yeah. And and then we have you know, Kevin O'Connor, our legal eagle, Kevin O'Connor, on the Republican side. He um, uh, a very good trial attorney, very well connected in in the Boston bar. Um, has great. He ran before too, didn't he? If I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> yes. Yes, he did. Um, yeah. You know, attended Trinity College. Uh, certainly uh, very successful. Uh, you know. A, uh, court and trial attorney, um, so so he certainly is is no slouch either on the Republican side. I mean, you know these these are two um, people who um, who basically are not career politicians. The, right. the, you know that's right, the difference right. I think between the two, you know, the Republican side for Senate and the Democratic side for Senate. You know, <clears throat> you know Ed Markey and Joe Kennedy. You know what's the family business politics? Yeah, end of yeah, story. Yeah. You know these people. You know it's basically like. Um, years past, in, in my opinion, uh, in terms of the founding of this country, you know, everyone had their own profession, sure. and then they served, you know, in politics for a short period of time. Uh, but their mainstay was the family businesses back home, whereas you know, there is you know there is a um, a sect in this country that now politics is the business yeah. uh, rather than uh, you know another. Well, they're new, they're new faces. Uh, yeah, let's oh, put it sure, that way. Sure. I mean, everyone knows Kennedy, yeah, and everybody yeah. knows. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Marky, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. very interesting, very yeah. interesting choices, yeah. Yeah, a ver quite the variety. And, and the pandemic the, has made it so, so strange with, the, with this political season in terms of the lack of fundraisers and the lack of uh, people out there dropping off literature at your doorstep, yeah. too. I don't want to forget uh, Jared <coughs> Valenzuela as well, running for co a county commissioner on the Republican, Republican ballot from, from Rockland, from, mm -hmm. our, Rockland. from our general area currently a planning board uh, member. So, yeah. um, I, again, the... Uh, the choices are significant here, both for uh, senator and U.S. rep, but more, specific, more specifically for uh, uh, senator from our area and representative from our area and then county commissioners uh, as well. Again, that county commissioner race, those are all four well-known individuals, so we'll have to see how that vote splits up between, uh, mm -hmm. um, between, the, four of, uh, between the four of them. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting because you know none of these individuals are from Brockton, so I'm, I'm going to be interested to see where Brockton, uh, the Brockton vote uh, goes with respect to those 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 people, those yep. candidates. Yep. I think we're being prompted here. I couldn't necessarily read the. Uh, the oh read. yeah, we have a video. Okay, we have the video. Okay. Of, Thank you. Yep, Senator Michael Braden. <laughs> Well, the day's going great. Uh, it, I've had tremendous support. I want to thank the Brockton firefighters for standing behind me. We're standing strong. I've got a ton of labor support out there from a lot of unions and working people of the Commonwealth, but also the residents who are out all over the district. I've had tremendous support out there. And I want to thank everybody for helping me with this election and everyone who's voting today. Well, obviously, with the COVID pandemic, it has been a difficult year for everybody. Uh, you know, we worked to get some funding for the district, working with our congressional delegation. Steve Lynch has helped get us some funding for Brockton and also working with the county commissioners. They got $93 million, and they just uh, gave a check to the city of Brockton yesterday at the Neighborhood Health Center, and that's been the toughest part. That's why we're putting the mask. I took it off so I can talk to you live today, but uh, it's been a difficult thing with COVID. Too many families have suffered from that. 
uh, and, and that's been the toughest part of this campaign season. Well, I'm going to continue to do the work I've always done. You know, Brady Works is my theme, and I work 24-7. And I, the biggest thing, the Student Opportunity Act, biggest increase in school funding in the history of the Commonwealth, over a billion and a half dollars to the Commonwealth, over 200 million to the city of Brockton alone, but we got to make sure it's implemented. When COVID hit, everything kind of stopped in its tracks, and that's why I worked with the delegation to get some funding from the federal government into Brockton and to the Commonwealth, and also work with the county. And we helped to get personal protective equipment, work with our fire department, our first responders, our nurses, they are on the front lines, and even our food workers that have suffered, because they got to work in these supermarkets. We want to make sure they're protected as well. So getting the equipment and getting the funding to replenish these cities and towns. And, you know, not just the federal government, but I support a lot of other initiatives, the Fair Share Amendment. That would bring more revenue to Massachusetts and to the city of Brockton. That's going to be voted on this coming year. The uh, DraftKings and sports betting. Everybody does it. It's a half hour ride to Rhode Island. We can get that revenue into the city of Brockton and the rest of the Commonwealth. And I just, you know, it's been a great campaign from a lot of friends of mine and supporters. I just was at a classmate of 1980s house today up the street on Thornton Street. Lisa Sullivan, she was voting for me with her boyfriend, and uh, Joe McLaughlin's helping me out. I got so many great friends helping me out, and I can't thank them enough. Well, the, you make sure everybody's protected, as I mentioned, with the COVID, because it's not over yet, in getting the funding to the district so we can implement the funding not only for our schools, our first responders, and that's why this is some of my theme right here. We've got over $350 million of personal protective equipment, working with our federal government, emergency child care workers, providers, the CARES Act that we passed, and many other programs, and early education. And that's what it's all about. And I'm grateful to have the support and endorsement of Representative Claire Cronin, Representative Jerry Cassidy, and the Chairman of Ways and Means, which I'm an honorable member of. Mike Rodericks has endorsed my campaign. So nobody does it alone. I've got tremendous support from a lot of labor organizations and other colleagues across the Commonwealth. Well, unlike what you see in Washington, which they're not getting along, most of us get us along very well in the, in the district and so forth. I know my opponent has made some disparaging remarks. That's what they usually do when they get desperate. You know, I've known him for a long time. I don't know why he's gone, had to go down that road. I want to keep a positive, uplifting campaign. And that's what Michelle Obama says, when they go low, we go high. I just am grateful to all the supporters, thankful to all my friends and supporters out there. We cannot do it alone, and there's still time to vote. I'm asking for your vote. The polls are open until 8 p.m. tonight, and uh, I've had so much support, it overwhelms me, especially in these difficult, difficult times. We've had the highest number of mail-in ballots in the history of the Commonwealth, as well as early voting, and uh, that's because of the COVID and so forth. But we still have people that haven't gotten out to vote, and we're out in the neighborhoods reaching as many people as possible so they can get out and vote. And this is an important election, not only for my elections as, as your state senator, but the U.S. Senate race is important. The other local reps races in this county commissions are on the ballot as well. So the important thing is everybody has to vote. You know, it's our forefathers, our veterans fought and died for the right for our freedom to be able to vote in open elections, and we have to get out and vote. I got up a little early, um, have been around um, checking out all the, the sights and sound of the, of the district. And it's been uh, very interesting. Have met quite a few people, and uh, the support out there has been incredible. It made it somewhat very difficult uh, to basically, you know, campaign door to door because you're you're afraid of uh, knocking on some people's doors, uh, and you don't know what you're bringing or what they're bringing to you. So it was easier just to kind of try to stay away as much as you possibly can and try to reach people, you know, through the social you know social media and some of the uh, other mediums that we actually have in the community and hopefully we uh, we did a, a decent job decent enough to get people to come out and vote for us today listen I it basically shows you that democracy is alive and well in America uh, I mean you hear all this noise coming from the national level where people are, are being told to stay away from elections people are being discouraged from participating but at least it's you know, based on what we see locally, people are engaged into this, and um, it gives you hope that um, things will go well in November as well, and uh, it's a good sign for this country. Well, the voters in this community will get somebody who is totally honest with them, uh, not someone that walks around and telling them that their uh, greatest accomplishment 
is voting for ideas that are not theirs. Uh, they're also going to get someone who, who will fight for true funding to benefit this community. Not again funding that's designed through some formulas and some um, budget appropriations that come down the line that, that come down the line from uh, from Beacon Hill. So that's what they're going to get. Somebody who's honest about it. Somebody who's going to um, have the moral uh, character to represent this this district with honor and dignity and that's what they can count on. I think the issue is that we face, especially in the, in the, in the greater Brockton community, is the lack of resources that we, uh, that we face. Uh, we don't have the uh, benefits as some of these other communities have, these other cities have, of having uh, a humongous tax base. We don't have that. And we rely heavily on uh, state aid and, uh, and our ability to uh, convince the state to help us out. And, uh, and that's why I think it's important to have somebody that actually has the credibility and the ability to go out and, and acquire the, the necessary fundings for our community. Well, you know what, I think we have to be honest with one another. I mean, recognize that we have issues in our community. Uh, recognize that race has been a real issue in this community. Recognizing that COVID-19 is not a hoax, is not something that the Democrats have invented. And realize that it's not going away. As a matter of fact, it keeps getting worse and worse every day, and this is something that probably we're going to have to live with for, for a little bit. And, and that, I think, is the difference uh, of what goes on in the community in the sense that we got to be realistic. we got to be realistic to call, call it what it is and, and recognize that when we have problems within the community that we, we must come together as a community to resolve it because if we don't, it's not going to get solved by itself. Well, you know, the, the first thing we're going to do is get our, you know, get a sense of what goes on out there and, uh, and realize that uh, we have a lot of friends up there. We have a lot of people within the legislative, that will, uh, legislative uh, body that will help this community out for the right ask asking. You know, somebody that's not going to go and embarrass this district and that's going to represent this district with honor and dignity. And I believe uh, we will be able to get a lot done within 100 days. Listen. I, got, I think I got a lot done in six months as mayor in this community. I think uh, as a state senator, I'll be able to do quite a bit within 100 days uh, of getting up there. Well, I just want to thank uh, everybody that actually has been a part of this campaign. It hasn't been uh, the longest campaign because of COVID-19, but I have a great team behind me. I've got a great family. I've got a great community that supports me. And I got some great elected people who are behind us. So it's been a fun campaign, and hopefully uh, we can keep it going and, and make this district proud of our accomplishments. Okay, we're back now uh, after the uh, uh, presentations by uh, Senator Brady and uh, uh, Moses Rodriguez, uh, former uh, mayor uh, of, uh, of Brockton. And I think we're going to be looking at some, uh, some early responses, uh, voting responses, that uh, came as a result of the uh, mail-in vote. So. Uh, uh, I think they'll be put up in, in a second, and there we go. Well, we're going to start right from the top there, uh, uh, and of course, it's awfully close, and it's awfully uh, <laughs> narrow, and, and it's, it's too soon to tell, obviously. We're not talking about But isn't lot, that but, interesting? Yeah, but that's uh, an interesting but, uh, number. That, that's an interesting oh, number, boy. especially since people felt that uh, Ed Markey was going to do uh, so well. Here, you know, we talked about uh, Steve Lynch and his... Uh, uh, a senior position within the uh, within Congress, and I think that's kind of showing up there with uh, with his vote, 409 to 140 for uh, Robbie Goldstein. <clears throat> Here you go. You want to, yeah, uh, Tom? Sure. You want to yeah. talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, the uh, race between uh, Senator Brady and um, Mayor Rodriguez, Councilor Rodriguez, um, 327, 262 right now. Uh, certainly, well within uh, you know uh, striking distance of. of uh, Michael Brady, but um, again, a close race. <clears throat> Two very well-known individuals. Um, <clears throat> both have uh, served the Democratic Party very well in the, in this city, in this area. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. Um, and, and again, we were talking about how the pandemic <clears throat> has really limited people in terms of yeah. you know, knocking on doors, uh, dropping literature. My neighborhood always would have a ton yeah. of candidates and a ton yeah. of literature <clears throat> not present. And certainly it is... Um, I would say uh, been a, a, a craw or a problem for people with regard to um, fundraisers. You know, sure. people don't want to get together in, in really large groups. Yeah. 
So here we go uh, on the Republican side. Here you go, Kevin O'Connor, uh, about a 200 uh, vote uh, lead there. Um, mm. I, I guess that's not surprising because he's, he has, well, I don't know if he has greater uh, name recognition, but certainly uh, he's, he's not a newcomer to it, where, where Dr. Shiva is uh, relatively new to the process. But nevertheless, uh, again, we're talking very early in the camp, in the, uh, oh, in, in, the, uh, in the election, so we'll have to wait, we'll have to wait for that. Um, yeah, but like, like I said earlier, you know, it's very interesting on the Republican side for a senator. You know, these are two individuals coming out of you know, uh, professions, uh, whereas on the Democratic side, it's, you know, the profession is politics. You know, that, yeah. That's been their jobs uh, yeah. from day one. And, um, you know, a but different you know, the, uh, the, the, the Kennedy market, you don't know where those votes are coming from. I mean, you know, what, what part of uh, uh, this, uh, this area they're coming from. But uh, I guess it would be a little bit surprising that Kennedy is a little bit ahead. And now we see him uh, even more ahead with... Uh, <coughs> Well, I, I think it's interesting. Almost 900 votes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think from what I can tell from my sort of ear, on, unofficial ear on the street, is that a lot of the unions um, are, are more in the Kennedy yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, camp as opposed to a lot of the, um, uh, let's call it, uh, uh, lean, hard-leaning left yeah. groups are with the Markey yeah. uh, group. So I know you go into town, you see Local 103 there. Yeah, They've got absolutely. The, big, the big sign, oh, yeah. it's Kennedy, Kennedy, Kennedy. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. All the time. Yeah, definitely. So that, that's an interesting uh, split of the Democratic Party. And, 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 and let's admit that the Democratic Party certainly there has a variety of members. You know, yeah. you, you have the working Democrat, um, you know, from, from uh, traditional Democrat, and now you have the, um, <clears throat> I, I don't know what you want to call it, you know, the, the, yeah. the really liberal leaning uh, um, groups that are, that are demanding. Um, yeah. Attention, you know. Um, here you go, some more here. Well, now it's uh, tightening now it's, up. Oh, now wow. it's, yeah, tightening up. There, there like, you go. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm telling you, these are two well-known people in this area. Mm -hmm. Both of them <clears throat> have served well. Obviously, uh, you know, a couple of issues uh, with regard to Senator Brady. Um, Moises, uh, uh, Mayor Rodriguez, very well-known uh, and did quite a, a lot you know, in, in the few months that he was mayor. Yeah. Uh, he, was not, uh, he was just not a figurehead. He yeah. rolled up his sleeves and got right. involved with every yep. issue and, and did as much work, I think, as he physically could in that short period of time. So he yep. was not just sitting there uh, yeah. you know, collecting uh, you know, a, a check and uh, just uh, killing time. Yeah. He was working his butt off, and he did a great job while he was there. And of course, you see him with the, with the Navy hat on, the veteran. That, that, <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that doesn't hurt either. You know, that, that well, hurt. yeah, but that's, you know, again, that shows the type of person he is. He served this country and yep. um, he's proud of it. And, and I think yeah. that people like to see that, you know. So I guess we're going to go to a, a video uh, <clears throat> pretty soon. Is that what I see coming on board here? Or are we going to stick with some election, election data? Here we go. Okay. for being here. Um, my day's going really well. I have a great crew of supporters with me at the different polling locations. Um, I, I hope everybody will come out and vote today, September 1. Um, it's our primary day. My name is Michelle Dubois. I'm your state representative and I'm a candidate for re-election on today's ballot. So if you live in Ward 6, Ward 5, or Ward 4, you can go to your polling locations in 4B or 4C, Ward 5, B, C, or D, and all in Ward 6, and cast your vote if you choose for me. I ask you for your vote, and I ask you for your support. I'm honored to be your state representative. You know, it's been a really, it's been very different for me. Um, typically, I will knock on doors throughout every single campaign and talk to voters and ask them what's important to them. And um, now we've been doing a lot of telephone, um, internet, um, Facebook, social media. I don't, I, I feel very, um, 
responsible uh, for making sure that the folks in our community stay safe. So I just don't think it sends the right message um, knocking on someone's door right now during COVID. Um, but I have been dropping literature, talking to people from a safe distance, and really trying to engage through social media and the telephone. I've been on the city council for 10 years and now I've been a state representative for six years and during that time I've always focused on providing services for the folks that live in the community, um, getting them justice, making sure that our schools are funded appropriately. Um, during the time being a, a state representative we fixed four local playgrounds for kids so they'd be able to play in a safe fun environment. Every child deserves a, a nice playground in their neighborhood. My goal is to make sure that all the playgrounds are fixed. I, my environmental justice bill which says just because you live in a working community, a low income community, a community of color, the people can't put their garbage, their tire burning facilities, their power plants, their transfer stations in your neighborhood. Brockton has the highest asthma hospitalization rate for children, fifth highest in the state every year. And I've been working on cleaning up our air, making sure our roads and our, our our bridges. We're redoing the intersection at Boundary and North Quincy Street right now with state dollars. I've been working on that for many years. So what people get from me as their state representative is someone that's responsive, cares about what's important in your life, and I fight for that up at the state house. Well, at a local level, it's really government transparency, communication, making sure that the people that live here, all the folks watching on um, Brockton Cable Access right now, know that I care about you, I want to hear from you, I want you to tell me what is important in your life, and then I want to fight for that for all of us. We all live here together. We all, you know, in, live in Brockton, West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, but everyone watching BCA is probably living in Brockton. I grew up here. I love this community. It's very important important to me and I hope that you'll give me your vote today on September 1. So I show respect to every single person I come upon, be you rich, poor, person of color, man, a woman. Um, we're all, from Brockton's perspective, we're all workers here, but we have to admit there are injustices in this world. And anybody that lives in Brockton knows the injustices in this world. We felt them. Um, you know, sometimes our community gets a bad rap, and all the people that live here are wonderful people, but we get a bad rap. We don't get the services that we need. We need someone up at the State House fighting for us. You know, corporations and all, you know, the fat cats and the big business. They all have lawyers and lobbyists working for them to make the system work for them. I, as your state representative, I've been trying to make the system work for Brockton and for West Bridgewater and East Bridgewater, but since this is Brockton Cable Access, I'm speaking to Brockton. I'm fighting for you. We stopped a power plant. We're redoing playgrounds. We're going to get $100 million more into education over the next seven years. A bill that I filed got rolled into the Student Opportunity Act. I'm always thinking about what we can do to make our community a better place but there are injustices there is a divide and it's our responsibility to stand up and say that that is wrong and that everybody is equal and and start acting accordingly all across the board so that's what I fight for I fight for justice I fight for fairness and I think everybody really deserves a shot in this world and us in Brockton I'm fighting for Brockton and I want to thank you guys so much for coming out being here and taking taking coverage of this uh, political campaign on 2020 September 1 Thank you. Well, you know, we've uh, been out since seven trying to cover all nine locations. I think we've done a pretty good job of it. Um, you know, we've got five people here today, right now, I'm trying to keep it around five at the Brookfield, two or three at some of the smaller locations. Um, but I'm, I'm doing all right, pretty optimistic. Uh, we've gotten a pretty good response, thumbs up, waves, beeps, and a lot of, you know, people coming out are wishing us well online. It's a weird, weird time, weird time. This is gonna be the weirdest election in 100 years. Um, which I imagine will be used as an excuse by whoever loses whatever race, wherever in the country. Um, yeah, it, it was interesting. Uh, wearing the mask, you know, it takes some getting used to. Uh, you know, especially with the glasses, it fogs up pretty quick. 
Uh, so we gotta, we gotta work our way around that. Uh, but we really did emphasize the door knocking, like we always do. Um, socially distant, you know, knock, step back. We've all got the germex and everything, you know, made sure we were safe about it. But this is how you, this is how you run. This is how I know how to run. This is how I'm going to do it. You got to talk to the people you want to represent. Uh, it's, it's the same. I'm, I'm promising the same things I promise as a counselor. I make three promises. If I miss your call, I will call you back. I'm going to work as hard as I can. And if I can't pull it out of my pocket right now, I'm not going to promise it to you. We've had a million politicians promise you a million things, say a million things. Uh, I just don't want to do that. You know, my priorities are the same as, as, as they've been as a counselor. Communication, infrastructure, public safety, education, fiscal responsibility. And, you know, at the state, I want to focus on municipal autonomy. There are a lot of things, especially with traffic control, which is big now, that the city can't act on. And that's, that's because of the, the strings attached to a lot of our state funding. So we need a way to resolve that, to cut some of those strings, to allow us to still receive our Chapter 90 road money but not have to bend over backwards to do it. Um, you know, it's, 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 all about, it's all about doing the job. It's all about being effective. Uh, I think my track record as a counselor speaks for that. And, you know, I hope, uh, I, hope I can say the same as a representative. Local level is the infrastructure. Infrastructure, especially on the east side, um, it's bad. Our water pressure is bad. The pipes are bad. Half of them are are considered inadequate. If you had a fire, you know, um, you know the six-inch mains. You need eight or above on a lot of these these Campanelli streets. The roads above are awful. Many of them were paved incorrectly. They were just you know they just basically paved over the ground. They did not put a proper base coat. They didn't crown the road so the water flows off. They didn't add drainage. So we have a lot of roads that are in really bad shape that haven't been touched since the 60s. And the 60s is not super old for a person, but it's super old for a road. So we need just a lot of complete restructuring. You know, as, as a counselor, the, one of the first things I, uh, I got was $3 million to pave roads that only paved two roads. And they were decent sized roads, but that's ridiculous. So we're not going to get that done unless we get help from the state. But we've, you know, I feel the council has been very supportive of the DPW, and I've, I've really made it a point to, uh, to, try and, uh, to try and invest in that department as much as we can because we need it. And we needed it 20 years ago. And they didn't start on it now. They, they did the politician thing. They kicked it down the road. But we can't hold them accountable for that. All we can do is hold ourselves accountable for our actions now. And I mean, my, my counselor slogan was for a better Brockton. So that's, that's it. Um, yeah, I like that, I like that, uh, that we're nonpartisan in municipal elections. I think it's very helpful. I think it keeps everything honest and, you know, and keeps you voting for who's best and not who matches your, your party. Because um, it was Mayor LaGuardia of New York said there's no Republican or Democratic way to plow a street. You know, that's, that's, that's it. That's all that, that's all that you can focus on. Our roads, our pipes, our schools, everything like that, at a municipal level, the party doesn't really matter. So all we can all we can control is our, you know, is all we can control. We gotta work with what we got. But I think that I think that the you're right. Our issues are the same at this level. You know, the Republicans just as mad at the road as the Democrat. Uh, they want the streetlights. They want the pr police presence just as much as anyone else. So, so keeping it nonpartisan allows us to, to keep these issues that identify with all of us uh, and keep out the issues that don't. Because there is a place for talk of, of a lot of things that you know, goes on, go on in national politics, but that place is not your local government. Your local government's about making sure your street light works and making sure that your kid's actually learning in school. Hi, I appreciate the time you've given me. I appreciate the support I've gotten from, uh, from the voters, from the constituents. Uh, you know, it's still time to vote. Uh, I appreciate just, uh, just the support I've gotten and everything. Uh, it's been a hell of an experience. Uh, and I hope to have everyone's support as, uh, as the day winds to a close. And uh, I, hope to, I hope to emerge as the next state representative for the 10th Plymouth District. Uh, 
and I, you know, I appreciate everyone's time. Okay, we're back after uh, looking at uh, some of the statements from uh, the candidates from the 10th, uh, 10th District, uh, Michelle Dubois and uh, Jack Lally. But I know they're going to put up some numbers here, and uh, I'll defer to Tom here to, to uh, give yeah, us his I mean, insight. I mean, it's still, it's still a tight uh, race. I really want to see and boil down the numbers where they are coming from. I would love to know, you know the makeup of those numbers, how many are coming from Brockton, how many are coming from the towns. Again, uh, both, in my opinion, solid candidates. Um, so it's going to be very, uh, very interesting. And, um, you know, I, I don't think uh, with either candidate, Brockton loses. The yeah. city loses. I think both candidates are fantastic individuals. So, so well, I. Well, there's, you know, yep. what, four, four, well, here we go with Mark and Kennedy. And uh, I guess at least this is a surprise, I think, if we will look uh, at if it. You uh, if you listen to the media, yeah, I it, mean, it shouldn't be anywhere close to, like that. Mark, he was supposed to have a double-digit double, double sure. digit lead. Well, it certainly doesn't have a double-digit lead right yeah. now. I understand oh, yeah. this, is, this is not the whole state of Massachusetts. I understand that. But uh, if, if you look at the uh, uh, industrial towns like uh, Brockton and Quincy and New Bedford and, and Fall River and Taunton, uh, if, if, if Labor were to come out as I think Kennedy wants him to, well, uh, he may be able to uh, overcome some of that. Yeah. And, and here, of course, uh, again, this is, uh, uh, I guess, not a surprise in terms of name recognition and uh, experience on the Republican side, but... Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think... I it know you have, a, you have a fondness for, for Shiva, as, as you should, because well, of, uh, I, I, of, of what he's accomplished yeah, as I a... Yeah, I absolutely as do. A, you know, you know, as again, an immigrant The here. American dream, new to this country, I mean, his credentials are incredible. It started, I think, seven high-tech uh, companies. Yeah. He, he claims to have uh, invented email or, or yeah. been a big part of it. Yeah. The, I, I know there, there's nothing here that's changed from the last time in terms of Stephen Lynch and, and Robbie Goldstein. In fact, well, I don't know what, uh, what that was about because you, I, I think there was, it was more, more numbers last time than there was this. So, mm -hmm. so maybe yeah. there's a, yeah. we'll put it back up and, but again, and, Steve and Lynch, refresh it a bit. A steady hand, very well yeah. known. No, yeah. no, uh, no issues that uh, you could say uh, uh, are going to rock the boat with him. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing uh, outrageous uh, that has recently happened to have him worry, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're going to be going fairly soon to the uh, county commissioners. Uh, for their, their statements, uh, Greg Handley, Michael Brady, Carlos De Silva, and uh, Jack, Jack Reardon. So I think that that's, uh, that's coming up in a couple, of, uh, a couple of seconds as we move to these uh, individual interviews and, and, and video uh, presentations. So that, that should uh, take us through. Uh Commissioner oversee a budget of approximately uh, 10 million dollars, um, 83 employees, employees working uh, throughout uh, the courthouses, uh, the Brockton Superior, Wareham and uh, Hingham District Court. Um, they um, work side by side with the Hedge of Deeds and also the uh, county treasurer. Um, they oversee the 4-H program, the OPEB retirement uh, fund, they oversee the Mayflower health insurance, um, and a few other programs. They own, uh, you know, plenty of land. Um, so essentially, uh, they work, you know, hand in hand with the elect local elected officials. Uh, hopefully, you know, to enhance programs that already exist, or perhaps come up with something that you can apply across the county, and which is part of my goal. So three things that, uh, that I'm running on that I would like to have it enhanced at the county level, um, accountability. I am calling for the, uh, um, you know, the commissioners to have the records uh, audited uh, twice a year and the findings uh, publicized on the website so the community on um, you know, the 27 municipalities can know exactly how they're spending their money. I am calling for transparency. I would like to have all the uh, meetings uh, publicized on a yearly calendar, like we usually do on the school committees and other entities, uh, where you know when a meeting will take place you know, a few months from now. I would like those meetings to be videotaped, just like you are here right now. Uh, and then you know, within less than 24 hours, 
uh, release, so individuals can watch on their own pleasure uh, through social media or even at the 27 towns cable access television. Uh, and I'm also uh, calling or introducing a program, an internship program, which is brand new, where I would, uh, you know, have the county partner with uh, the colleges and universities within Plymouth County and uh, also the chambers of commerce because they essentially they already have the relationship with the businesses and uh, have those interns come into the county be supervised by the teachers uh, through the program where essentially they will, will earn credits and at the same time uh, learn valuable skills uh, they could write grants uh, and the money raised through grants which is free money we could provide additional services to the 27 communities. So essentially those services could be, let's enhance the senior centers. Whatever service they provide and they need money, let's have a little money for them. Homeless, the overall homeless population, most of the time their services are underfunded. Well, let's have grant writing. You know, whether it's the environment, uh, youth are looking for more, you know, to get engaged, uh, you know, they're looking for more recreation facilities. Well, listen, we have a lot of property in Plymouth. How about if we start looking into buy property in Brockton and creating something that the youth can be involved in? And the other thing, too, is obviously the firefighters go to Stowe to get trained. Many bring their programs in, 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 you know, and get trained in, in Brockton, but they could use uh, larger facilities. So how about if we come up with a location where we could have uh, uh, you know, a, a fire training uh, facility where they can train all the firefighters in Plymouth County and elsewhere, right? And they use that also for police forces, so on and so forth. But I think I have a great idea here. I could bring the much needed diversity to the Plymouth County. They have on the history of uh, Plymouth County, they have a person of color uh, serving there. And as I had mentioned to you earlier, I am an elected official in the town of Hingham, where I am uh, the vice chair of the Hingham School Committee. I was elected in 2016 and re-elected in 2019 and selected by my peers as the vice chair. So, and by day, I am a state auditor with the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development. We do have a satellite uh, office right here in Brockton. So my goal essentially is to expand on the work that I'm already doing out here. I am a public servant, a proud public servant that works, you know, uh, with integrity uh, and truly value uh, uh, serving the population. And that essentially is my goal. Um, obviously, there is four individuals uh, running for this position. I hope I am one of the two that will move on to the general election, and I am hopeful that I will be also successful on November 3rd. Uh, yeah, so if the voter is interested in learning more about me, please go to my website, carlosdasilva.org. Again, carlosdasilva.org. You can also email me at uh, carlosforcommissioner at gmail.com. Thank you. Okay, that was uh, Carlos De Silva, and we'll be looking at some of the other candidates for Plymouth County Commissioner uh, a little bit uh, a little bit later. I, I, I think we're going to try to get up some uh, some new numbers there, and there they are. Hmm. Um, Tom, I'll let you. Uh, yeah, very very interesting close race so far. Um, the um, both candidates are very well known. Um, I would say I would characterize them as uh, Michelle Dubois being the more uh, progressive Democratic uh, candidate. Jack Lally uh, being the more uh, democratic, uh, bread and butter, um, uh, moderate democratic uh, candidate. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Well, it's basically uh, 60 votes or so. It's 58. That's not, you know, that's not an enormous difference there. So, uh, oh, no, there's, there'll be more very, votes very to be close. had. Oh, be plenty, of, yeah, plenty yeah. more votes. And, and yeah. now we have on the yeah. uh, state senator side, Michael Brady at 4501 and Moises Rodriguez at 4031. Again, extremely close race. Um, just goes to show you uh, both candidates and both races, like I said, t uh, t in each race, two very yeah. well-known candidates uh, in, in each race uh, who have served Brockton for, uh, you know, who've served Brockton well. So, yeah. you know, certainly uh, Brockton does not lose uh, with the outcome of either of yeah. those uh, uh, races. We looked at the, we looked at one of the uh, Plymouth County Commissioners, but uh, Greg Hanley, who has uh, consistently uh, done very well, usually as uh, uh, a very, very popular uh, uh, commissioner, and, and he's topping the, the ticket right now with uh, Jack Reardon uh, coming in second and Carlos Sosova third, I mean fourth, 
and Michael Brady. So uh, again, these are uh, preliminary numbers. Uh, the night is still young yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And there we go. You will see a little bit of a change there. In fact, a significant change from mm -hmm. before. 600 votes uh, for, for Markey over, uh, over uh, John, Joe Kennedy the third. So I don't. But uh, again, I, that I, race wasn't supposed to be close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that was not supposed to be a close race. And here you go for uh, on the Republican side for Senator Kevin mm -hmm. O'Connor. Uh, I think it's tightened up a bit there, not much, but. Um, mm -hmm. Clearly, uh, you know, clearly Kevin O'Connor certainly uh, has, has, a, has a much larger lead, but, uh, you know, Dr. Shiva is um, you know, coming, coming right along. I think that yeah. people uh, enjoy a, a, good, uh, a good story, and I think his, yeah. his American dream and uh, success in this country is I a think, great I story. I think that. Uh, mm -hmm. That Brady Rodriguez uh, vote is isn't. It seems that Brady's pulling away a little bit, not much, but just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 500 votes or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to make. I don't want to make too much of it, but I'm. Yeah. I'm just saying that there, the the spread seemed to have increased a bit along the in in the last couple of minutes. So we'll have to we'll have to keep track of uh, of that as we as we move forward through the evening. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's going to be very interesting um, to watch you know, tonight. And, and you mentioned, I, w I wish we knew where some of those votes are coming from. But yeah, uh, that's going to be the interesting. That's not criticizing yeah, anybody here. Yeah, that's going to be the interesting but, uh, piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to see what, what, where those are coming from. Are they coming from Brockton? Are they coming from the towns? Is it a mix? Yeah. Is it even? I think um, we were told some of those votes are coming from Whitman. I don't know what, what that's about, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe, they're, maybe they're a better organizer. I don't know. So... Uh, We'll yeah. leave it at we'll leave it yeah, at they, that. They can process the mail, I guess, faster. Yeah. You know, yeah. so excellent though. This is this is really a, an interesting night. It's it's interesting because the the races are so tight, um, and yeah. you're gonna have to yeah. watch it to the end. You know, this is like my my wife says when we watch a Super Bowl. She says all you have to do is watch the last uh, two minutes <laughs> of a game. Why do you waste the whole game the night watching that game? You know, you're gonna we just see got noticed that there's no votes coming in from Brockton yet. So whatever, <laughs> there you go. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever we see with the uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with some of the others, whether it's the Kennedy uh, Markey or whether it's yeah. the county commissioners, uh, uh, we're not uh, we're not getting it. And, and here we go again with the uh, some new Republican numbers for the uh, U.S. Senate race. Traditionally speaking, when, when, if those numbers are, are mainly from the towns, traditionally, when you didn't have two Brockton candidates going for yeah. each other, the Brockton wave will carry that Brockton yeah, candidate yeah, over the top, the top if it's yeah. tight. But, yeah. but this, this race is going to be very interesting because yeah. you have four Brockton candidates. Yeah. So where is that wave going to take you? And the wave's probably going to be pretty tight or yeah. pretty even. Here you got the Markey Kennedy, and it looks like a little bit of an extension of uh, Markey's, uh, Markey's lead. Yeah. Not anything dramatic, but uh, something in the neighborhood of uh, 900 votes or so uh, over uh, over Kennedy. Michael Brady, how would you uh, how would you analyze that, Tom? Well, I mean, without seeing where they're coming from, I'm not sure. But I mean, Michael Brady certainly is the incumbent. Um, you know, uh, you know, Mayor Rodriguez, Councilor Rodriguez, um, you know, is very well known in Brockton, but. Certainly not well known in all the different towns. Um, the uh, you know the towns that basically uh, affect uh, that um, that uh, race is uh, you know Brockton, East Bridgewater, Halifax, Hanover, Hanson, Plimpton, Whitman, and parts of Easton. So you know how how strong or how was uh, large was the um, you know was the Rodriguez uh, uh, campaign in terms of infiltrating those areas? I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, you know Michael Brady obviously is a name well known in those towns for this position. Sure. Uh, but there um, you go again. Yeah. It's about 400 votes, something along those lines. A little bit uh, less than 400 votes. And again, Brockton is not coming in, so this really. If those it are the doesn't tell if, all the story. If those at all. are the towns, if those yeah. are the towns, and that's really not a big piece of Brockton, watch out for for, for you know this race. It, it, it's gonna it, it could go any way, you know. Yeah. yeah. But I, we need to know where those numbers are coming from to really be able to to predict. And I, I'm not going to predict this one, that's for sure. And I'm not going to predict the other one. You know? No, no, it's no. too it's too early. This one I, here, I now, love. Now this one it, I love it, it, because they counted Kennedy out. Now, yeah. You know. yeah, Kennedy was not supposed to, you know, in this last this last week or so, you know, they they, they brushed Kennedy off. Markey was, you know, gonna gonna basically run away with it. And this yeah. is great. I love this. This is yeah. great. This yeah. is really good. Hmm. Yeah, you tighten it up a bit, not much, but nevertheless, here you go again. Yeah, this is. Yeah, yeah Kevin O'Connor yeah. is really. Yeah, I think we can moving, see that. Moving this out, one I'll predict. Front. I'll, I'll predict this one. <laughs> good, good. You can yeah, do that. And yeah. 
You'll be, you'll be yeah, given yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, a, a great deal of yeah, credit yeah, for uh, your uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. What a, what, prognostication yeah, skills. Uh. Yeah. What a, what a great sage. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But you know, it's funny the the uh, Marky e. Kennedy race. You know, to see the big names and who they went with. You know, Nancy Pelosi. Right. Um, she did the uh, ad, ad for Kennedy. Uh, you know, Marky e. had you know AOC. Uh, right. And, and, and sort of the the more progressive uh, wing of the Democratic Party in Washington. Um, so, so again, there's a contrast. I mean, you know, Kennedy certainly, you know, is certainly no uh, conservative Republican, no, but no. obviously he's viewed as more center-ish. Yeah, yeah. To and Markey yeah. certainly yeah. over, over viewed to the left. Viewed as the, on oh, the progressive yeah. wing. Here you go. Now here, now, now, here we go. Uh, now we're, we're seeing a little, little bit break. of a yeah, spread A little there. bit of a break, yeah. A little bit of a spread. Yeah, going towards uh, Senator Brady. Yeah. yeah. Which I guess will, uh, if this holds up, I think that would give, give him a... Uh, a pretty good shot at retaining his seat. Mm -hmm. But you know, for someone for the first time running um, you know, out of the city of Brockton, certainly, yeah, that's a good showing. Sure, you know, I yeah. mean, so, so who knows? You know, who knows? Um, you know, Can but, always come back again, as I say. You know. Well, you know, you know, um, you know, Mayor Rodriguez. I, you know, I, I know both candidates very well. You know, Senator Brady. They're both. Um, uh, they're both Brockton guys. You know, they, yeah. they're, they're, they both will take care of the city of yeah. Brockton yeah. no matter what. Yeah. So, so Brockton wins with either one of them. But, um, you know, again, um, both candidates are hard workers, that's for sure. Yeah. So. so here we go again. It, uh, well, it tightened up a bit, I think. Com you yeah, know, tad, I'm not yeah, saying it's going back tad, and forth, yeah, but I mean, tad, yeah. it's, you know, 800, 900, 700, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of uh, vote total is uh, nevertheless uh, Michael Brady uh, yeah. clearly ahead. Our rep race, I'm, I'm wondering what, what, what's going on with the rep race uh, yeah. between, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah we haven't uh, seen that in a while. Too, so and, and I think, I think they're trying to get some numbers from yeah. uh, Dubois and, and mm -hmm. Lally. I don't know yeah. how successful they are, uh, they're, they're, they are with that, but the they're trying to get The last show in numbers was pretty close, though. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. What was it, 60 votes or something? So, like something, that? yeah, but that was, that was a while ago. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. We'll have to just see whether they can find out uh, how that Dubois Lally race is going, which is a critical one. And here we go. Uh, yeah. Wow. Tightening up. Yeah, even more so. Yeah. Tightening up, yeah. Talking about, yeah. you know, yeah. less than 300 votes. Sure. So, if my math is correct. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I wish they, they could come forward with that Dubois and, La, and Lally, but. Uh, um, so far, we haven't been able yeah. to get that. This keeps going in the predictable direction. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Here we go. Well, I think it's the same. I don't know if that's new or not, but I, th I think uh, that's the same. Nothing yet. Yeah, yet. That, that's the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. The I'm same. getting the getting the notice. Nothing yet. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. If 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 the uh, information is not there, there's nothing we can do other than emphasize the fact that uh, Michelle Dubois earlier on in the evening had. Uh, a slight lead over over Jack Lally, so that's yeah. uh, and it was interesting listening to the um, to both of them speak. You know, Michelle Dubois made a point of saying that um, uh, she wasn't out there knocking on doors this time around. Uh, she was, you know, concerned with um, you know COVID nineteen and the pandemic, and decided to go with a telephone a telephone type of a um, campaign. Um, and Jack Lally, more traditional, said, "Hey, I knocked on doors. Mm -hmm. I was out there knocking on doors and talking to people." Um, I, I would assume from a safe distance, and obviously he had a, a mask on uh, when he was doing the interview, yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. a, a, a basically a difference okay. of uh, strategies. Oh, here you go. This will wake some people up. Mm -hmm. He's taking the lead. Not by much, but it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. So uh, it's one of these neck and neck races, uh, yeah, yeah. unless, you know, un unless uh, uh, well, Boston and Cambridge, uh, I think, you know, Somerville, that area, I think would, would likely be market, but you never know. You never know where his, where his support is, except we know that he's got a great deal of union support, Joe, Joe Kennedy III. But I think this is early on a, a surprise, at least it is to me anyway, yeah. from what you heard some of the uh, double-digit uh, uh, Markey, uh, Markey predictions. Uh, it doesn't look double-digit to me right now. So, no, uh, not at all. And again, that was not supposed to be this close of a race, uh, according to the, the uh, prognosticators this, this week at all. Yeah. Um, and, and I would love, again, to know where those votes have come yeah. in from, yeah. because you, you would think that if, uh, if those are the more... Um, oh, here, here go. we go. Yeah. Seems to be continuing to 
break in this direction. Well, it's you know, it's but, you know, it's it's a solid lead. I think yeah. you'd have to say that it's yeah. a solid lead. Yeah. Um, but you know, depending on where those votes for Markey and Kennedy are coming in from, the yeah. ones that are left over, you, you may be able to make some predictions. You know, yeah. you know, if, yeah. if they're if they're you know blue collar yeah. type cities, you know, if they're if they're more uh, you know uh, sort of a progressive, uh, well to do. Um, uh, liberal you right. know, bastions like Cambridge and right, uh, right. Uh, places like that, and, uh, you know, uh, Newton, what have you, parts of Bro uh, Boston. Well, th if those votes have already come in, you might say that, well, Markey's already received the bulk okay. of his okay. votes, and then the, one, the other ones that will dribble yeah. in might be from blue-collar towns, like, sure. you know, Lawrence, Brockton, and Fall River. We New just Bedford. got to notice that some Brockton votes are in now, so oh, maybe, maybe we'll be, be able to get a better sense of uh, this might be interesting. how things are, uh, are going in our city here today. So we'll just have to wait until they put them up. But uh, I'm sure that, that vote is critical. I would think you would agree oh, yeah. with me on that. Yeah. I'm sure, this is the teaser. See, this is this is like a TV show. They show us yeah. this before they get to what we, you know, the <laughs> last thing. And then they're going to break for a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we'll be able to get uh, some of those Brockton numbers up as well with regard to uh, Brady. Rodriguez in a couple of minutes here once they are able to, there okay, you go. Here we go. I think well, this, from uh, what we've been able to f find out, this it does include some of Brockton as okay. well, so. Uh, um, Again, it, 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 it's close, it's not a runaway, but, yeah. but still, you know, a decent lead, but depending on how many more, more votes are out there, yeah. um, who knows? It's not over till it's over. Yeah. But again, a very d a different campaign uh, uh, time, you know, with respect to the situation that we've all, you know, we've all been placed in. Um, you know, people, I think, are very uh, uneasy with uh, uh, getting too close. Here we go again, a little break. Uh, We're <laughs> little, back and forth. Break, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's back and forth. A little break now yeah. going to Markey. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, the, you know, the, we normally in Brockton have a, a, a quite a few. Fundraisers and 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 they're modest fundraisers. You know, they're they're not huge. You know, ticket fundraisers. You know, most of them are between, um, you know, twenty five and you know, hundred dollars, depending on the, the position. But you know, those really didn't get to take place this year. You know, yeah. so so you know, depending on you know how much people had in their campaigns, um, um, I would be curious to know how many how much out of pocket expenses out of the people, candidates' own pockets they threw into. I'd be interested, campaigns. Tom, for you to tell me. How, are the people of the voters of Brockton forgiving over uh, Mike Brady's past transgressions? Are they? Uh, I think how, a, is, how does that play in yeah, Brockton? Yeah, I'm not talking I, about I, I, outside. I think of a lot of well, I think a lot of people in Brockton um, uh, like Mike Brady, mm -hmm. and I, I think a lot of people, um, you know, if 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 you if he's he's been in politics a long time, and, and Mike certainly, uh, if you have an issue, Mike will follow through on it, mm -hmm. and, and Mike will uh, you know tend to it. So. I, I think that a lot of the uh, the older Brockton uh, people uh, will will still break with Mike um, with respect to you know the the, the change of the city um, and and some of the the younger people I, I think um, they might tend to move toward uh, yeah. you know Moses, Moises to Moises, Moises. Um, um, so you know no one felt good about uh, you know. Yeah, see, reading what happened with, you know, right. in in the news with with Michael, but uh, yep. with with Senator Brady, okay. but I, I think people you uh, go, you know, uh, people will take hard work yeah. in their in their behalf and, and forgive. And so that's six hundred votes. We're talking yeah. generally five six hundred yeah. votes, something along those lines. Um, but his his lead seems to be stabilized in that yeah. five to six hundred vote range. And I think the vote count shows that people in Brockton are, or, or in, in the district are forgiving because if, if people were right. extremely outraged, right. then Michael should be at 5,000 sure. and, yeah. and Moises right. should be you know, at, yeah. at eight or nine. nine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so that tells me something that you know, Michael's been around and has served people for a long time, but Moises is doing so well you know, yeah. that he's doing tells me that you know, people appreciate what he's been doing too. You know? yeah. so. I don't know if this uh, shows a trend now, but Markey <laughs> appears to be uh, uh, putting a little distance between mm -hmm. himself and mm -hmm. Joe Kennedy, but uh, obviously way too early. But yeah. nevertheless, there was uh, uh, a smaller difference between the two of them. Now it's 
now it's in the neighborhood of uh, 2,000, uh, 2000 or so votes. So uh, we'll just have to see how that plays out. And I know we, we got some notification that the town of Bridgewater is in, so we'll have to, we'll have to see how that, uh, how that plays out as, uh, as, as well. So interesting that we don't have much information on the uh, Dubois Lally race. Yeah, yeah. I know they were trying to find out more, but yeah. uh, which means maybe it's awfully close and nobody wants to admit <laughs> anything, right? Right? That they, I don't uh, know, but uh, because then that uh, uh, that would that would point to something final. Oh, okay. Final. Okay. Here we go. There you go. Yeah. Wow. If this is the final, 3684 for wow. Michelle Dubois and 2707 for Jack Lally. That's a significant victory. Yeah. Significant yeah. victory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what tells me uh, that... I mean, we're talking a thousand votes here or so, you know, yeah. something in, those in that neighborhood. That's, yeah. uh, that's a lot. Yeah. Which tells me that, you know, Michelle got her people out. Yeah. Um, or that, um, you know, people are pleased with... Uh, her representation yeah. in this area. Um, but I, again, I, it's going to be interesting to see where those votes are coming from. Coming from, um, yeah. I, I would have thought that it would have been a, a, a little tighter because I, th of, I thought so too. Yeah. It was earlier on a tighter, yeah, uh, tighter but then the, she obviously pulled away, uh, well, recently, yeah. uh, as, the, as the final uh, final numbers have come mm -hmm. in. So, mm -hmm. well, congratulations Absolutely. to Representative yeah. Michelle Dubois. Yeah. If, now, do we have a report that those are the final numbers? Well, that's what. No, yeah, we shall see. Well, well, I mean, that's what we've been we've been told. We'll we'll find out uh, if uh, yeah. if that is indeed the the, the case. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll wait to see whether something else comes up. But I don't think so because uh, final is final. I think right. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, uh, um, you know, Jack again. Jack Lally is uh, is not finished his his career in oh, terms not of at uh, all. in not terms of all. governmental no. service because of his uh, because of his youth. So this this uh, apparent defeat. Uh, means that uh, just one bump in the road, I guess, and uh, he'll be back. He'll oh, be back. I'm sure. I mean, you know, and, and right now, you know, he is a, a city councilor here yeah. in, in Brockton, right. and um, I think very well liked, certainly yeah. in his ward. So, uh, to me, you know, will he go beyond that in politics? Oh, yeah. I definitely think so. He's, yeah. you know, yeah. he's got a great personality, and uh, he's, um, you know, a solid, a solid candidate. Uh, yeah. You know, and again, yeah. Michelle yeah. Dubois certainly. Yeah. Same thing yeah. with her constituency. They, um, you know, liked her and continue to support her. So, um, you yeah. know, if, if, if she did win, which, 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 oh, look at this here. This is. Now, now we're breaking. Something now is now here in. we go. Now here must we be, go. Cambridge must be coming in and Somerville and now, Boston. Now, you see my, my, my your, wife always says, watch the game in the final two minutes. Yeah, there's your. There uh, you go. <laughs> there's your double digit win right yeah, there. there or or, or uh, yeah. a lead right coming, coming forward yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. You know, Michelle winning, if that, if that is indeed the case, uh, points to the fact that this progressive wing is alive and well, oh, I think. Absolutely. You know, you can't, you can't ignore it if that's, her, Not if at that's all. what's going on here, which I think you'd have to probably agree that uh, that would uh, uh, point to uh, 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 an emphasis on progressive uh, values, the Green Deal. Um, well, I think that's why maybe he's, even defunding yeah, yeah, yeah. the police. And sure. I don't know whether. And I think that's why the, uh, yeah. the Democratic Party yeah. in Washington yeah. is, is sort of confused a bit. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you really have some internal strife between the, the powers that be, the people in charge, uh, and, and where their politics are. Yeah. You know, some people, you know, being pulled more to the left than they really want to be, but are doing that out of pure survival yeah. because yeah. they see how, like you said, how powerful this progressive yeah. wing is. Yeah. You know. And some so, and some very powerful women now moving oh, forward absolutely. as well. Yeah. Um, here we go. I believe there this might go. be yeah, yeah. might be the one of the. I mean, final. that's still early yet, but I mean, yeah. uh, it's it's. But it I shows think you where this is fairly, going. Yeah. Fairly clear that uh, it would be uh, 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 an upset if Robbie Goldstein were to overcome that kind of uh, that kind I mean, of. Lead I, by I would Lynch. be shocked. Yeah, I would yeah. be shocked. Yeah. You know, where where Steve Lynch has always been very attentive, uh, you know, to certainly this area. Oh, we have uh, some more numbers here. Again, there, you know, that's close to what 900 votes right there. Yeah, but it's a, it's spreading a little bit now. Mm -hmm. It was 600. Now it's yep. now it's in the neighborhood of 900 or so. So uh, I'm not calling any race here. That's not my mm -hmm. job. But right. the point is that it would appear that uh, uh, Brady's pulling a little bit away. So, yeah. um, so, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Kennedy Markey race. That's 
That's well now. So that, that, yeah, now all that's sudden, what everybody now, now predicted that he would crush yeah, him. Yeah, now we have separation by, uh, by a large large margin. Yeah, but uh, if we had and advertisers, here you have a thousand yeah. vote, uh, vote difference there. So if we had advertisers, they would want to, they wouldn't want to, you know <laughs> they would want to get their money's worth early on when, when people were really here you go. paying attention. Yeah, yeah see you know you're talking twenty thousand yeah. votes here, so so that's uh, yeah now we're that's, breaking. Uh, that's 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 an enormous uh, challenge for Kennedy to overcome that. So. Uh, it looks like, it looks at least at this point that uh, uh, Markey will retain his seat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the United States Senate. Yep, and, and here again, Kevin O'Connor and, and Dr. Sheba yeah. uh, continuing to uh, the gap separating. Yeah. So, so yeah. no no surprise there. Um, we haven't seen any numbers from the uh, county commissioner. I mean, in a while, so maybe that's going to be coming up as as well. Uh, Hanley, uh, Greg Hanley was. Had a significant lead over uh, over the other three, but we're talking about uh, two, uh, two out of the four. We'll have to just wait to see how that how that plays out. But other than other than that, apparently we have Michelle Dubois winning, and we have Mike Brady expanding his lead. Uh, Stephen Lynch uh, likely going to be the victor, and Edward Markey uh, looking like he's going to retain his seat by a comfortable margin, unless something happens that uh, we're not aware of. Uh, in terms of the Kennedy vote. Yeah, I mean... You know, Here you that, go. Here's our county commissioners. Okay. There you go. Greg Hanley, yeah, Greg Hanley 11. Doing very and, well. uh, and number Jack two Reardon. would be Jack yeah. Reardon. Yeah. Michael so, Bradley yeah. and Carlos A.F. to sell yeah. 573. So uh, I guess that's not a surprise because Hanley has uh, a, a very solid uh, uh, following. I think he was endorsed by uh, Stephen Lynch. In fact, I know he was. Here mm -hmm. you go. Again, this is... What, yeah, 900, 900 votes, 900 something votes. like that, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But again, Going slowly, towards. slowly expanding that lead, uh, and uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on it, but it would, it would appear that Mike Brady is, is inching his way towards, mm -hmm. uh, towards a victory there. And here there you have, go. you know. Yeah. The separation. A, a yeah. separation even, even more than last time, so uh, it uh, looks like Ed Markey's night, unless we're missing something along the way here. That, yeah. uh, that I'm not aware of. And with regard to the county commissioners, uh, Greg Hanley and Jack Reardon uh, are very familiar names in Brockton. Yes, they, yep. they, Yeah, I mean, so I would say that for Brocktonians... Good they, Irish guys, right? Huh? Well, I mean, but they've also, uh, they, they've shown a presence here in the city. Uh, you know, Greg Hanley comes to many events, uh, uh, openings of uh, buildings, right, know, the right. parking garage. Right, know, right, right. He was there uh, for the uh, Bill Carpenter opening of the parking garage. Um, you know, Jack Reardon, um, the, the Reardon name, uh, especially sort of in the Abington area, um, yep. you know, very yep. Yep. Uh, well known. Um, Here you so go for <clears throat> Steve Lynch, just for mm -hmm. quick, I didn't mean to interrupt oh, you, yeah. but, uh, you know, again, expanding that lead mm -hmm. by a considerable margin, 1,200 votes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So those, so those two names um, are very familiar here in Brockton. You know, mm -hmm. they, they they basically have had a, pr a stronger presence than uh, you know Michael Bradley and, and Carlos De Silva. Um, so f just for familiarity, people I think um, uh, feel more comfortable with with those names. Um, yeah. oh, here we Can go. You, uh, Still breaking a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That's well, about what nine hundred votes, yeah, something still, like that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's but again, it's, you know, yeah. incrementally, it's every every time we look yeah. at it, it's a little bit more, not much more, but a little bit more. But but a close enough vote that people need to continue to do their jobs and look over their shoulder. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's not yeah. a runaway, you know. Yeah. It's not a runaway. Um, here we go. Yeah. So there was uh, that. That looks like uh, some of these races are now settling into uh, yeah. reality now, as far as that's concerned. I think definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I mean, nothing has been called other than the uh, Dubois and uh, and Jack Lally race, but uh, clearly, I think uh, the Lynch race is likely going to be uh, decided fairly soon, and and Markey will will I think go on to uh, uh, another six years in the United States Senate. Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, again, it would all depend now what happens on the Republican side uh, right. with regard to 
Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, but, here, here we go with the uh, county commissioners again. Again, uh, those, those two, uh, both Hanley and Reardon, have uh, increased their lead in, into the thousand range. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the others, I think, are, are fairly, fairly far behind. Yeah. And, and Although Michael yeah. Brady, uh, Bradley, Bradley is not Bradley. way off there, yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, it looks like, and here we go, what, what 1,300 votes again? Yes. Yeah. 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 Breaking a again, little I bit more. Again, I don't want to yeah. you know, keep repeating it, but every time yeah. we look at it, it, it increases yeah. by yeah. 100 or, or so. So uh, yeah, I think looks I, like it could be a good night for Mike Brady here. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, people are going to have to look at where those votes come from, the communities, and see if, if they're going to challenge that seat again. Um, it's going to it's going to take a, a lot more, uh, I guess, uh, attention to certain pockets yeah. of um, support. You know. Now help me out here. Mike Brady has this is his. He's been a state senator for how many years? I should know this, but uh, I would think it's been. So this is third, uh, th fourth election. I would say it's about eight years. Really? I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, so I'm supposed to know that, but I. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, well, I probably should too. But um, yeah, <laughs> I don't I mean, want to put you on the spot, but I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, but Michael, you know, has been you know a very steady hand here in mm -hmm. Brockton, and and uh, you know, basically, certainly involves himself in everything. Um, but again, you know, so does you know, Moises Rodriguez. I yeah. Mean, so both yeah. both candidates yeah. are. Huge names here in the city. Yeah. So, so to me, I would love to see how those numbers and what areas pulled for them here in the city, yeah. and then, you know, the towns. You know, yeah. you know where those numbers and, and pockets of support are coming from. Uh, again, Michael Brady certainly the name you know, more well known out in the towns than than, than uh, you know uh, Moises Rodriguez. Yeah. Um, and but, I think that's probably it too. I mean, it's, it's name recognition yeah. outside of uh, outside of Brockton. Yeah. And, I and think. then you know, and, and then here we like, go with the. Uh, Again, now Michael, Michael Brad Bradley has uh, hit the 1,000 mark. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be Bradley versus Reardon there if, if, uh, if this continues. I don't think anybody's going to catch up with uh, Greg Hanley, but, uh, but Reardon versus Bradley could be, could be something to, to watch, although you know, that, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a big amount there, you yeah. know, a couple hundred votes in, uh, when you split it by four. So, uh, <clears throat> but some interesting takeaways in terms of and this is still continuing to go in that direction, yeah, yeah. Uh, the O'Connor direction. But you know, y you mentioned before about you know, are the people, are the voters forgiving? Well, obviously they are. You know, whereas, yes. whereas when I was a kid, yep. something like that would probably have been yep. the end of, yep. of, of a political yep. career, yep. except if you were a Kennedy yep. <laughs> or Ted Kennedy, you know? Yep. But, um, um, and then, um, you know, with respect to the more um, progressive agenda, you can certainly see that those candidates, you know, like like a, a, a Senator Markey and yeah. uh, you know a Michelle yeah. Dubois, <clears throat> there's a lot of support there. So I so, think that that may be one of the takeaways here is that sure. uh, that progressive agenda is something that can can no longer be ignored in uh, in Democratic politics uh, or, in, right. or Massachusetts politics anyway. Here we go again. Uh, Again, that 20,000 uh, vote lead is pretty much holding up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. But again, this race is really fun to watch. Yeah. For yeah. F and, you know, for the beginning and so maybe maybe we'll be seeing until uh, the end. Senator Markey. Well, not not that that soon, <laughs> but certainly uh, uh, by 10 or 11 o'clock, I think Markey would be going out and saying thanks to everyone who helped me. Uh, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. And then I'm sure that uh, they, you know, they will certainly circle the, the yeah. wagons and, and, and kiss and make up and go forward because everyone is going to want to, um, I guess, throw their support behind Joe Biden yeah. and beating you know, Donald Trump if you are a Democrat. You yeah. know? So that, that certainly will be the um, call for unity. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so. so we're going to have an interesting couple of months coming up. Tom, when you look at the county commissioner, and I try to put you on the spot here, that, that the county commissioner does what? Well, the, basically, the, the prison, takes, uh, the sheriff's, yeah, yeah, yeah. the registry of registry, deeds, yeah. um, you know, uh, courthouses. Courthouse, uh, yeah. So um, in the district, 
Uh, and uh, they, to some people, you know, what 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 are these guys doing? Why am I voting for them? You know that kind well, of thing. Well, uh, th that is a that is a yeah. Um, yeah. a longstanding question: the need for county commissioners, because the the politicians at the state level would love to do away with county government. Right. Uh, where county government uh, basically you know, came, you know, back in, in in the days of the founding of the state, you know, and that, and it just just such a long-standing tradition, um, and and formed e uh, each county, you know, got their own again, like, you know, prison, registry of deeds, uh, courthouses, so so they really had a, a role back then. But then at some point in time, you know, the state uh, penal system. Uh, Right. Uh, and, and basically, um, efficiency. Uh, people are calling for the end of it because you have, you have, you know, all these registry of deeds, you know, and you have all of these different uh, uh, jails, prisons, what have right. you, you know, under different administrations. So some people feel that it would be much more efficient politically to have them under, you know, one sort of superintendent right. of X, Y, and Z, one. Uh, Accounting department, one bookkeeping department, right, for right, because right. because you have all to, these different to unify yeah. every uh, yeah sure yeah and, and and sort of like regional school systems right right I mean uh, you know Brockton is basically a huge school system but you have some of these little pocket school systems that have all have their own superintendent their own their own personnel department their own you know whereas if, if you could combine you know Abington Whitman uh, and, and, and another small you know, East Bridgewater, town. Yeah, that, yeah, East, that, right, right. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There's three, yeah. and you only need one superintendent, one one right. director of personnel, one you know accounting department, one bookkeeping department, and just really make things more efficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and Plymouth County is one of the few counties in Massachusetts that still maintains a, a larger role in 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 governance than some of the other counties. If I'm oh, not I'm yeah, mistaken, yeah, 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 because because of the uh, the, the power of the numbers. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, and also if you look at the Plymouth County and land masses, I mean, uh, Plymouth, Middleborough, these are huge, huge tracts yeah. of land right, um, right. You know, in, in the state. Middleborough is huge. Plymouth is huge. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, anyway, it, w it would appear that uh, Greg Hanley and, uh, and Jack Reardon uh, are headed for victory, although uh, some of the latest numbers pointed to Michael Bradley as at least giving a, a challenge to uh, Reardon, although Reardon is, uh, is ahead. And again, we want to remind that everyone that, uh, that Michelle Dubois has uh, defeated Jack Lally, uh, and uh, Ed Markey is considerably ahead over Joe Kennedy by 20,000 votes or more. Steve Lynch uh, looks like he's uh, moving towards victory uh, as well over Robbie Goldstein. Uh, mm -hmm. And the Brady Rodriguez uh, is, uh, well, still too close to call probably, although uh, it's... Now 1,300 votes, I think it, it's, would you say it's moving in a direction of a victory, I think. I would say I think so. that, that, I would say that that would be fair to, that would be fair to say. And just to correct the record, it's nice to have friends here in Brockton because a good friend of mine um, just said that Michael Brady was elected state senator in 2015 and was a state rep from 2009 to 2015. Okay. So okay. thank you, my good friend Peter Reardon. <laughs> <laughs> we will credit Peter for that information. Yeah, give, give, give him a, give him give a, him a shout out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here we go. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, there, there does appear to be uh, a, a Hanley Reardon victory here. Mm -hmm. um, both Bradley and De Silva are in the 1,000 range, but uh, um, Bradley is about 300 votes. <laughs> away from uh, Reardon, which is not impossible for him to do that, but yeah. uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, that's, a, that's a mountain to climb. Let's put it that yep, way. It's definitely. a mountain to climb. Yep. So we know where that's going. And they, and they put up uh, uh, Lynch's numbers, which are significant over, uh, uh, over Robbie Goldstein. So mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. there you go. My, well, almost yeah. 1,800 votes, 17 and change there. So uh, yeah. no surprise. again, that's, yeah. a, that's yeah. a significant, uh, mm -hmm. that's a significant number. And you want to look at this here? This is yeah. now, now it's, now it's, now, now it's uh, 11,757 to yeah. 9,506. Yeah. So the break is happening. Um, yeah. This is a significant change from the last time we looked at the numbers mm -hmm. uh, as well. And I, I would say that uh, it's starting to appear as a, uh, Significant victory for Michael Brady returning to the state house uh, for another for another term. And uh, again, Kevin O'Connor, Dr. Shiva Ayadore, 
22,422 to 15,072. Yeah. Actually, I think he picked up a little bit. Didn't Dr. Shiva? I mean, I can't recall, but I mean, it's still obviously a, yeah. uh, but, yeah, a significant like, victory yeah, the for gap O'Connor. Is, but, the gap's uh, getting a little smaller, he's, but... He's, uh, he picked up a couple yeah, of votes there. I, I mean, still don't uh, see him. I don't, I don't want to demean it, yeah, but I, I demean I, I, him. Yeah, but, uh, I still don't see him coming it, up it with closed victory, the victory. It closed but, the, the yeah. gap a little bit anyway. So. Yeah. So. And I think there, here, here we go with the, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, again, that 20,000 range seems to be where we're, where we're at right now with the Markey and Kennedy. That hasn't, that hasn't changed and likely won't uh, unless something were to uh, occur that is unforeseen at the, pre at the present time. It's going to be interesting to see the next, uh, you know, next steps for J uh, Joe Kennedy yeah. and, and where he sees himself going. Yeah. Um, the um, you know, Kennedy family, again, this is certainly going to be a... Um, I don't know, a wake-up call or, yeah, yeah, or, or basically yeah. a, a reorganization. Since Kennedy a reorganization. Was, a, was way ahead early in the campaign and all of a sudden uh, uh, Markey and his uh, team turned it around. You know, Markey's um, uh, campaign manager is John Walsh who ran the campaign for uh, Deval Patrick and brought him out of nowhere. Uh, not that Markey was, uh, was uh, nowhere, but the point is I think he had a a very good grassroots organization. He was yeah, able at, to. At, yeah, at the beginning, it seemed like he was on his heels. Yeah, and yeah I think, I think yeah, he was very yeah. afraid that he could lose this election. Right. Uh, so, right. so obviously, some very talented people, uh, you know, assisted in this yeah. uh, change of momentum. Yeah. You know. Uh, but if there if there is a message here with the Michelle and and Markey, uh, I'm not saying that's the a critical, but the progressives had a good night here, uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, their their victories. Yeah, Massachusetts is certainly uh, you know a, a, a liberal state, a more democratic state, uh, and and it just seems to be getting more and more progressive yeah. every single day. Um, um, you know the um, you know the, I never growing up here in the city of Brockton would ever have imagined that you know there would be pot shops in yeah. Mar in, in Brockton. Um, um, just shocked, but. Yeah. Ten years from now, God only knows what we'll be doing then. You know, I mean, so uh, you know, it's just a changing time, a changing yeah. place, and uh, um, you know, it seems like a lot of people are, um, you know, there's. I think, in, in, uh, look at if if it doesn't hurt, if hurt me, then you know, go ahead, do right. whatever you want. You know, um, you know, being on the school committee, my my concern certainly for you know all of these candidates and the issues is how we are raising and affecting our youngsters, you know, right, you know right. what are we doing to them and in their educations and ability to prepare themselves for the future? Are we watering, you know, are we being so progressive that we're watering down standards and we are, um, you know, thinking that we're doing a, a great thing in the name of, um, you know, I, I guess social and an emotional learning, but, uh, you know, can our kids, uh, function as efficiently and going to be able to take care of themselves and and certainly the aging population yeah, yeah, as yeah. the as, you know as as the people today take care of uh, you know their their parents you know yeah. so um, and some people might say that our society is changing that the parents aren't really being taken care of so well that you're just putting them in nursing homes and you know not taking and care of them like you know their their kids did years ago you know yeah. so so who knows and where we're going? Homes were the were, were the center of the COVID crisis. So correct. Uh, so how uh, well did we take care of those yeah. those el yeah. elderly? You know. So now it's about thirty thousand. Yeah. So yeah. creeping so. Uh, creeping up and up and up. So, uh, and I think they they had up there the uh, county commissioner, which again it's it looks like it's uh, Handley. Yeah. And, here we go. Look, the there, gaps there even go. getting Handley and Reardon yeah. are uh, yeah, larger. And Bradley just is not able to keep pace with. Uh, with, in fact, uh, De Silva is catching up to Bradley for yeah. for third place. Not that it really it's, matters, I guess. Yeah. But uh, one and two are moving f further ahead, and three yeah. and four are getting closer to each other. So, yeah, yeah, splitting yeah. the vote. Were you surprised that Michelle did that well? Um, if if those are the final numbers, I I am because I thought my. Here we go, 3684-2707. Yeah. And there's that little asterisk there, so. Uh, Next to Michelle's name, hmm. which would suggest she won. I mean, we know uh, that, but I'm, yeah, I'm just saying yeah. now. Now that's uh, yeah, I mean, final is final. Yeah, um, I would. I am a bit surprised because I would have thought that um, the towns would have gone more for Jack Lally, mm -hmm. and uh, Brockton, I think, would have been a very close, tight race. Yeah. So, um, 
but again, I, uh, the numbers are going to tell the, the, yep. the story yeah, we'll when just, we see where they. We'll where have these to look at it tomorrow, from. right? Yeah, a little bit, exactly. little bit closer than. But congratulations, uh, than right now. certainly. Are, We're just is, looking is at due. raw numbers here rather mm -hmm. than uh, analyzing uh, where those numbers came from. Mm -hmm. But congratulations certainly is uh, yeah. is due yeah. Michelle Dubois well, and, uh, and, yeah. and Jack Lally certainly I, has. I think we did a, congratulate a Michelle yeah. somewhere along yeah. the line here, yeah. and and looks like we're going to be congratulating Greg Hanley and uh, Jack Reardon. Uh, it looks like we'll be congratulating uh, Steve Lynch, um, Senator Brady, and and, and probably Brady. and and it looks like Senator Brady. I think right that that's uh, that's a significant margin right there. Yeah. Although Carlos da Silva is, is catching up, uh, if, if you you know, not, he's not going to win anything, but uh, mm -hmm. that third place position is uh, getting closer and closer. For what that's worth, there you go, 115. So that's yeah. It was 20,000. Now it's 30,000. Yeah. So yeah. that's uh, that tells you, I think, all you need yeah. to know there yeah. about of how that is uh, how that's playing out. <laughs> so. Much yeah. more closer to what uh, the prognosticators were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But in the so, very beginning. So this time the pundits were probably right, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the in the beginning and the, they and had the us. the polling on, was yeah, probably yeah. right. Yeah, they had us on the edge of our seats in the very beginning. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's what uh, the experts say, but you can never you can never uh, fully be you know until the votes counted. You never know. I mean, we've had elections here in Brockton where you people have lost by. One vote, yeah. two votes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, four votes. Yeah. I mean, people. Uh, some people's relatives didn't go and vote, oh, and they sure. lost by. by yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. There's, yeah. there's, there's scores of examples of uh, somebody, you know, people winning by one vote, and uh, one of the councilors in Boston won by one vote. Mm. So. Yep. So. Um, and what do we have here coming up here? Just waiting on some results, apparently. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I and and I I. I th I think that um, it's, it's important to emphasize the fact that Steve Lynch uh, uh, apparently is the, is the, is the victor and uh, that will give him an opportunity, I think, not only for a couple more years, but uh, uh, entrench his position as a uh, senior leader of the, uh, of the Massachusetts delegation, although we don't know what happened with, with uh, Representative Neal in the western part of the state going against Alex Morris. I think he'll probably win as well. But, uh, you know, Massachusetts has uh, two very senior members in the uh, in the, in the in the House there that uh, I, I think will do us well if you uh, if you look at the opportunity for these two individuals to uh, to lead the way as far as advancing uh, not only their district but the state uh, state of Massachusetts. Yep, the uh, Republican Senate he's, race he's is coming is, up. He's yeah, well, closing the gap <laughs> a bit there. You're a tad, but I don't yeah. think it's gonna yeah. I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, but you know what's going to be interesting to watch? Uh, if, if, in fact, um, there is a Joe Biden win for presidency, from all the rumors, uh, Senator Warren might be moving into uh, some sort of some position. position within, uh, and, if, yeah. and then again, yeah. and there is an, an open seat that uh, would have that to Joe be Joe Kennedy filled. could run well, for. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, so, so all the different uh, opportunities yeah. uh, could basically yeah. break yeah. for certain people. Yeah. Um, so there, there, <clears throat> there was asked, there was always the discussion about the turnout and uh, and mail-in voting and, and people uh, leaving their homes uh, and standing in line with a mask. Um, we're we're here. We're not out out there to see how many people uh, stood in line. Whether there was social distancing, I presume there was. Yeah. Well, but, I, vo uh, I voted uh, right when the polls opened this morning with my wife over at the Hancock Elementary School mm -hmm. on Pearl Street and. Um, when I got there, there were five people ahead of me, and we were all basically, you know, six feet, six feet apart. Yeah. apart. And um, when I went in, the uh, poll workers. I don't know. Are we six feet apart? I don't even know whether. Uh, 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 probably four uh, probably, and yeah, three quarters yeah, or something like that. Probably four and three quarters, yeah, breaking all the rules. Um, but um, you know, the poll workers had everything very well organized. Um, and when I went by later on in the day, I, I could see everyone. There was a, lo a long line, but there was spacing yeah. in between everyone. Um, but uh, I, I think that the early voting over at the, the Westgate Mall is a big popular, um, mm -hmm. popular uh, uh, opportunity that people are taking advantage of here in, in the city of Brockton. And certainly uh, the mail-in ballots this year uh, were, were 
you know, yeah. never. Well, there's uh, a million statewide, yeah, so yeah. That, that, that's a yeah. huge number. So I would love to know in Brockton how many people actually mailed in their ballots and how many people did early voting, um, because that was certainly a big help today, um, you know, loosening up the polls right, so that there right. was... It wasn't, uh, you know, the chaos because, yeah. you know, the lines can be long when there's you know, no COVID-19, no pandemic. Right. Now, now with the six feet of spacing, uh, you know, it, it, it's even more uh, obviously onerous uh, to vote. But you really... Of course, you know, we have to look at the national elections in November when people are predicting that there could be a, a second wave of, uh, of, of the virus. I mean, who knows? I, I'm not saying mm. there will be, but... Uh, yeah. uh, it, it, it could be yeah. even more complicated. Yeah. could be more yeah, complicated. People, I think there'll be more people that consider mailing in their vote, vote more people yeah. that will consider yeah. you know, early, yeah. early voting yeah. just to try to yeah. you know, eliminate the, the chances and the risk. But knock on wood, I think here in Massachusetts, I think we all loud and clear are getting the message that we have to take, uh, proceed with caution. And I think that uh, that's why this election cycle um, you didn't see that, uh, you know, that knocking on doors so much. You didn't see right, all those door right. knockers. You didn't have all those um, election events, election rallies. Um, I, I did see, um, I did see sign holding, you know, yeah. at, the, at the corner, at the busy corners. Oh, I saw that today. Yeah, coming in here too. Yeah. I, I saw that. Yeah. But even during the, even during uh, the the uh, couple, the month or so prior to this election, there was definitely people at, uh, you know, at different city corners. Um, unfortunately, but they you know, weren't social distancing, though. No, no. they weren't. They no, were. They, they were, were. They were very tight. And you saw on yeah. some of the. Here you go. Yeah. Well, that that's from before, I think, right? That number. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's not that's not a new one, and that's not a new one either. No. That's basically. Yeah. No, I wouldn't say the the people holding signs were social distancing. Yeah. Um, but um, it it really shows you how things are different this time of the year than than they are for a normal election especially in Brockton. You know, our sporting events, especially our football games over at Marciano Stadium are yeah. very well attended. And every home game this season, there, there should be or would be tons of candidates you know, at that football stadium mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. people are going in to watch the game uh, every you know, Friday night. Um, you could count on that. Yeah. Obviously, that didn't take place. No, I mean, no. it, it, it's sad to watch, look at, go by the high school and see, you know, no tennis courts up, yeah. no one playing tennis, no one, pl no, no yeah. kids out there playing little league yeah. or softball. I mean, you know, it, it'll it, be interesting to see what the turnout rate was in in the city of Brockton. I mean, you yeah. don't, you, you can't really tell from here, but no, uh, st yeah, statewide yeah. they say it was it, it was it was a it, good it was, it was a good, good showing turnout, with yeah. with the combination of different avenues to get your vote in. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and this probably is going to change the way people think that people are going to say, hey, you know what, I, I am just going to mail my vote, vote in. in you, know, yeah, for, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, like like uh, this is a wake up call for a lot of uh, virtual businesses, right? Yeah. They're they're not going to be paying the high rents in some of the places in in town. Uh, that they did because they're going to let a lot of people, you know, work at home and not spend that money on, sure. on that expensive Well, there's even space. been talk about using your computer and just uh, mm -hmm. uh, type in your vote. You know, that, I mean, I don't think that that's going to happen because yeah, of the yeah. Internet security. But the point is we're, we're at a time now where you don't, have to be, you don't have to leave your house for a lot of things. Sure. You get, you get your food delivered. You get your, your uh, uh, books and, and other yeah. clothes delivered, everything yeah, it's, delivered. It's, it's called Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's yeah. putting everyone out of business. Business, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. Lord and Taylor just went under, you so that, you know, right. as an example. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so. so, yeah, times are a change, and times are a changing when. And, it, and it, voting it, will change as well. In fact, it has changed. Yeah. Uh, right now, and we'll have to see how that inf influences the uh, the national vote. Yeah. Because yeah. not every state is uh, agreeing on mail-in voting, and I know President Trump has been very, very critical of it. So it uh, it still remains. Uh, I wouldn't say controversial, but certainly not widely, not accepted by every, every state. Yeah. I mean, you so. know, certainly people want to make sure that the vote is genuine and that there isn't any, uh, you know, any mischief going on with the votes. And, and certainly no, you know, uh, 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 honest American wants that to happen. Yeah. We, want, we, want, we want, do not want to have to question the outcome right. of an election. Right. When, when, when we see a winner, we want to know that this was a fair and honest yeah. election. And... Uh, you know, that's the genuine winner. We don't want to be redoing elections. We don't want to, be, it's just not right. the way this country uh, operates or wants to yeah. operate. But now yeah. there's discussion about the fact that these, you, you won't find out who the president is <laughs> on November 3rd. It might be the 4th or the sure. 5th or the 6th. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that's not good either because no. people, people stay up to 2, 3 in the morning because I'm going to find out 
who the president is, but uh, it, it's not going to work that way this True. time. True. Yeah, yeah. Not I mean, you know, that way. Yeah, remember there was the Al Gore challenge, yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm sure people will be, if it's a tight, tight race, uh, yeah. challenging the outcome of this election. Yeah. So. You just got notice here that Hanson is not in yet. So, I mean, there aren't, uh, not every town is, uh, is, is uh, recognized in, in that uh -huh. vote total for the, uh, for the, uh, the Brady, uh, um, Rodriguez, and, 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 and the others as well, whether it's Kennedy yeah. and Markey or, uh, or for so, the county yeah, so, commissioners. So, yeah, so it's about, uh, you know, qu quarter to ten. Um, you know, and ordinarily, on, in a normal election, we would be all done. Yep. Really, I mean, we yep. would be, we would have probably would have wrapped up around you know nine yeah. fifteen, yeah. nine twenty. But um, yeah. you know, there's still there's still votes out there that need to be accounted for. Well, we'll see what they put up again uh, this time. But uh, uh, I'm I'm sure that it's uh, uh, we're we're coming to the end of the line here I, on uh, on on the votes uh, in these uh, in these critical elections. <laughs> and I wish we'd get to see it. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. The one good thing I think about the election, the primary happening today, uh, is we we like it when our students aren't in the schools, so that there's no um, yeah. there's no chance that uh, there's going to be any uh, any accidents with uh, you know our children entering the schools and people unfamiliar with the parking lots, and you, you hear it every year uh, in, in in some places where you know someone will go over a, a sidewalk and uh, or, or go yeah, the, yeah, go, yeah, go yeah, the wrong yeah. way in, into yeah. an entrance, you know, coming yeah. up the one way and um, yeah, there so, usually is one or two accidents somewhere yeah, along the line. Yeah, knock on wood, you yeah. know, this, this yeah, you election. You don't want to see that, but yeah, it's, uh, this election, it's true. no one was in the buildings, yeah. but for the you know people yeah. in the elections and adults. And uh, I think we basically in Brockton planned it the same way for the um, presidential election that yeah. the schools yeah. will either be uh, yeah. you know, probably an in-service day or something like that. The, the, the kids aren't going to be present, so that. Uh, we can avoid any unforeseen you know, tragedies. Obviously, the kids aren't going to be this year uh, in because we're going here in Brockton virtually uh, yeah. un until uh, you know, we can get a handle on what's happening with uh, you know, the if, uh, if, COVID-19. If, if Brady does hold up, which I think mm -hmm. he probably will, do you, what do you expect him from him as state senator? No, I think that he's going to be... Um, uh, what, what, what would be some of his major agenda items? Well, I, I think funding for the schools right now yeah. because... We were supposed to have a very, uh, this was supposed to be a very good year for the Brockton Public Schools mm -hmm. and education statewide for, you know, many communities in yeah. terms of increasing the funding um, and, and bringing the formula more into, um, you know, into line with what, uh, what education takes, you know, with regard to technology and and class size, yeah. um, and, and Brockton know, has taken a beating over the schools for over the years. Brockton has been I mean, leading, unfairly. Yeah, Brockton unfairly. has been leading the charge because Brockton has been one of the hardest hit communities yeah. with yeah. regard to school funding. Yeah. Um, so we we have led the charge, and we were instrumental in getting this funding formula changed. We brought in all of the other partners who basically came with us, uh, and and we got it done. But for now, this pandemic that yeah. uh, threw yeah. a, a major unpredictable wrench in this. Yeah. But I guess we're going to be going to a video. Uh, is that coming up, is I that think, what we're somewhere? Seeing? Oh, At least I saw a sign to that. Uh, it's coming up in a couple of seconds, oh, a couple of minutes. All right. We'll, we'll <laughs> so, yeah, so, so this was supposed to be a very good year for Brockton, yeah. education-wise. Well, he education has some clout. Uh, he has obviously uh, yeah. been there for a while. And, yeah, and, so, uh, so he certainly uh, can use his influence. Um, he uh, will be able to um, you know, continue to... Uh, have a good relationship with you know the Democratic uh, leadership, uh, who he yep. certainly has served with for for a number of years. Um, we have a very good delegation. You know, um, well, uh, Claire Cronin is an influential member. Yeah, top notch. Yeah. Jerry yeah. Cassidy. Yeah. You know, Jerry, Jerry certainly, Cassidy. I mean, certainly yeah. Michelle Dubois. Yeah. Um, um, it, it is very well known, and obviously, uh, you know, again, in this and won by a significant amount. You know, right. so it's and, not and, she didn't yeah, slide and, by. Yeah, no, no, and and, and yeah. who knows? Maybe. Uh, you know, maybe at the state level, there is a uh, very progressive wing that uh, you know she is a major player with, and yep. um, and that certainly isn't going to hurt Brockton. You know, sure. uh, if that's the way the state is going. Well, working you know? with uh, Elizabeth Warren, we're working with uh, Ayanna Presley, and uh, working with uh, uh, other other female leaders in the uh, in the in the progressive wing of the party. I think yeah. will uh, I mean, can't hurt Brockton either. No, and, and you can see these names. Big named, you know, female leaders. You yeah. can see that. You can see that Massachusetts is not hung up on, you know, in my opinion, right, right. You know, 
not voting for women, not voting for people of color. Right. I, I don't see it no. in this state. Um, you know, here in Brockton, um, you know, uh, this last election, you know, we have uh, people uh, that have been voted into the city council before, um, you know, very limited, uh, usually one um, minority on the city council. Now, you know, we have, you know, four, um, which, is, which, which is good. I mean, you know, the city of Brockton, I think, is uh, in a very unique position. Um, again, not a perfect no. community, but a community which I think people get along, yeah. have no problem having conversation about any yeah. issue whatsoever. And a the, door, a the, door, community. the door is always open with yeah. everyone. It's a diverse, terms, diverse, yeah, yeah. diverse community. But, but, but I think that with regard to the politicians, the elected officials, uh, the schools, the door is always open for discussion and, and what makes sense and what is right. Yeah. You know, so that's that's a good thing, and that's why I think. Um, and it was a sad thing to see Mayor Carpenter pass on. It was uh, yeah, yeah. he clearly was moving the city forward. There's oh, no doubt yeah, about that. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And and you know, and again, he had a very good relationship you know, at the state level um, yeah. for funding. Uh, you know, ha has a very good relationship uh, you know, with had a very good relationship with the governor's office. Um, the lieutenant governor is, is down here in Brockton and was down right, here right, quite right. often. I mean, you know, she, right. she had his ear, he yes, had her ear. Yes. I mean, and, uh, and uh, you know, he was able to get uh, programs and, and uh, funding for, you know, buildings and things that, um, that uh, mm. probably otherwise wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened, and, yeah. And, and things really, I mean, if you look down at downtown Brockton, it, it certainly is better than it was, uh, you know, three years ago, yeah. four years ago. Well, the center of town now, they're getting, exactly. you know, so things are, A lot are, of development. Are, are moving around, are moving forward. Yeah, prior to COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's nothing you can do about So about I guess we might be going to a video. We're we going to the video now? Okay. All right. All right. Are we here with the... Say, Senator Mike Brady, Mike, you're in the lead. Things are looking good on your end, but um, you know, results are not final. Just your thoughts on on, on what's on what are you seeing so far? Well, the numbers are looking pretty good uh, across the district. You know, um, I've won every town, I believe, outside of Brockton, and I think I'm ahead in Brockton so far. We're still waiting for a few more precincts to come in, but um, I just want to thank all my supporters and friends and all the people in labor that came out and supported me, all the working men and women of the district. Um, I've been a, a blue-collar worker all my life, and I've got a lot of support from the blue-collar workers out there. What did you hear from your constituents when you were out campaigning and, and even on today? Well, everywhere I went, the constituents were very supportive. Some voted early, so they said, we already voted for you, Mike. Some, today I was out knocking on doors, and um, they said, you know, we're going to go vote and everything else. Um, but it's been a tough year because of COVID. And, and everything else going on, and you couldn't campaign like a normal campaign because I like getting out there knocking on doors. I can lose some weight, too, which helps. But, uh, you know, it's been a difficult year, plus my brother passed away, and, and that's been the toughest thing this year, May 4th. Um, he had circulation issues, and, um, you know, they, they had put some stents in his right leg before COVID hit, and then he got the left leg, and, uh, you know, at the end, he got diagnosed positive with COVID. Um, that may not have killed him, but who knows? We're still waiting for all the results, and that was back in May. Um, so that's that's been the toughest year of my life with my brother. Um, you know, I lost my sister eight years ago, and and my brother. So I'm the last. I'm the youngest out of the three of us, and uh, that makes it tough, you know. But I I have a lot of great friends and a lot of great support, and I want to continue to do my work for the district. So. Uh, the numbers so far are in my favor. We're just waiting for a few more precincts and maybe one other town to come in. But uh, Hanson, I think, is still waiting to come in. But so far, the numbers are looking good. But I just want to thank everybody for their support. Well, Mike, wish you the best of luck. And uh, you know, no matter what happens, you know, continue on. You're going to be representing Brockton and a lot of other cities and towns, no matter what you do. So wish you the best of luck, and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, thank you, and I uh, appreciate you coming out tonight. And uh, you've always done a great job, and, and your camera person. So uh, I appreciate all the things that you've done, and I, I want to congratulate you for that award you won. Uh, well deserved, and I hope you continue to write some good work and good videos and good stories because we got to reach out and teach the young people about our history and what's going on in not only the world, but what's going on in this country over the years. So you, you did a great documentary, and I appreciate and congratulate you for that. All right, good luck. Back to you guys. Uh, I, I guess you would say that was his acceptance speech. Uh, 
or his victory speech uh, uh, over, uh, over uh, Moises Rodriguez. So we're going to put some numbers up now just to try to close out this, uh, this, the show. And, and of course, as you can see there, there's uh, uh, the lead of Markey continues to march forward, almost 4,000 votes there. So uh, we'll have to find out uh, what Joe Kennedy is going to have to say or do now that uh, right. uh, Steve Lynch yeah, by he, a significant margin there. Yeah, he's overwhelming pray, yeah. margin as far as that's He's going to pray that Elizabeth Warren yeah. moves on to something yeah, else. Yeah. Uh, Steve Lynch, 22,000. Um, there you go. We're, we're, we're talking, uh, what is that? Almost, uh, almost 3,000, not yeah. 3,000, yeah. but yeah. 2,500, something along mm -hmm. those lines. Um, and that, that continues to hold. Uh, and I would, I would say that, you know, Michael Brady did uh, um, say that he's, that he won, so whether that's completed, because I think they mentioned that Hansen is not in yet, so, but I don't think that's going to uh, have an, a, a, a significant impact on Yeah, there's no way Hansen, yeah, you there's know. no way Hansen, we're not, we're not even, talking even, about even Hansen if every a, vote went for, you yeah. know, a mayor and councilor Rodriguez, there's no way. Um, Michelle Dubois, yeah. again, um, by a, a solid margin there. Yeah. 3,600 to 2,700 over yeah. Jack Lally. 900 votes, sure. 900 votes, which again, uh, is is a big uh, is a big gap and, and likely there's that asterisk there, and then uh, uh, Hanley and Reardon, um, significant victories there for both of those and they they retain their seats uh, as uh, Plymouth County uh, commissioners with uh, Bradley and De Silva uh, fairly close to each other but it doesn't make any difference how close they are right to uh, yeah and again those two names very well known here in Brockton yeah. uh, this seems to be getting a little and Dr. Shiva is picking up a little bit yeah, of but, steam there but not but not I, enough to but I think the asterisk and, shows and they got that the asterisk over Kevin O'Connor yeah, I guess attorney O'Connor that would, that would move say that forward. Yeah. he he will be uh, the challenger to Ed Markey uh, in uh, in November now, so certainly we'll, two polar opposite yeah. candidates yeah. you know yeah. the progressive yeah. left yeah. versus you know the uh, more conservative right. So, and as, you, as we mentioned, uh, Steve Lynch there. Steady win. Uh, I mean, that's uh, a significant margin of, oh, yeah. uh, of victory for, for him. No surprise on yeah. that one. So I guess we're going to call those, call those uh, if we have the power to do that. Tom, do we have the power to do that or not? Well, I guess we have an op our opinion is. <laughs> basically, it's our opinion. You know? <laughs> it's our opinion that uh, uh, Markey's going to re retain his seat. Uh, Lynch will retain his seat. Uh, Brady will uh, will remain as the uh, uh, Massachusetts senator from this area. And Michelle Dubois uh, for, uh, as the 10th Plymouth District, uh, yeah. and then Representing, Hanley yeah. and Reardon, uh, and and then there were the Matthew McDonough, uh, McDonough, uh, Register of Probate, Tom O'Brien, Treasurer, and Chris, Chris Ionella. Ionella as the uh, as the counselor. Yeah, and on the Republican side, so, obviously Kevin O'Connor will be moving yep. forward to the Markey race for senator. Yep. And with regard to County Commissioner Jared Valenzola, yep. and with regard to the County Treasurer, uh, Karina Lisa Mopelas. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, she's going to be interesting to watch. Um, yeah. You know, very young person who is interested in uh, getting uh, experience in, in local politics. So um, we'll just have to see. They'll, they'll, be, yeah. they'll be around. They'll sure. be around. It'll um, be fun. Yeah. It always is. So we're going we're gonna to head to uh, wrapping this, uh, this segment up. We've got a couple of minutes here, but uh, we want to thank everybody for watching. And uh, we want to thank you, Tom, for giving your expert uh, uh, analysis here on, uh, on, on Brockton and, and, the, uh, and the races. Well, I wouldn't say it's expert analysis. I would just say it's from being around the city, a city that uh, you know, I love to be in. Yep. You know? and, uh, a, a well, I'm going nice to say it's expert. I can ah, say it, can I? Go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, sure you can. <laughs> so I, I, I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll close this segment. You'll uh, likely uh, see this program in November, November 3rd, although we were mentioning before with, uh, with the way uh, ballots are, uh, are going to be counted on there that you won't probably find out until maybe the 4th or 5th or 6th of, uh, of November who the President of the United States is, uh, unless something were to, were to happen uh, uh, to, to smooth the process. Uh, and make it more uh, more efficient, but I don't think so. But yeah. nevertheless, we have uh, we have two candidates uh, running for Senate now: uh, O'Connor versus Markey, and uh, uh, the other victors that we mentioned: uh, Lynch and Brady and Hanley and Reardon. 
So uh, with that, I'm, I'm getting a, a, a minute uh, here. So mm -hmm. this is, uh, this is uh, Mike Krasanek from Bridgewater State uh, saying uh, thanks for watching and, and thanks for all the people behind the cameras at uh, Brockton Community Access. They've done a wonderful job of putting this program together uh, and uh, getting all those results and, uh, and uh, providing you with an opportunity to see the numbers on a regular basis. Uh, and uh, again, I want to thank Tom for uh, his expert analysis. Uh, he's much too humble. And we'll uh, likely see you in November. How's that? Stay safe. You hear the uh, song, See You in September, but how about you see you in November? November How's yeah. that? Yeah. Okay.